Hey guys. Hello. Hey, we're both like. Uh, I know it's been such yeah. a busy week. Crazy. Oh. We um we unloaded everything from the live shop with me. And as you guys remember, everything from um, Wednesday night sale and Thursday night sale will combine with two night sale. So that yes. means big time um, combined shipping, lots of savings, lots of goodies. We have a really good mix tonight. Um, we got into some wonderful antiques. We've got some uh, fun glowing glass coming yes, in. Yes, we do. Ooh, had to turn that is shiny. <laughs> I know, I know, right? So good. Um, hi, Jim. Good to see you. Um, yeah. Lots of pretties coming your way tonight. Hello, everybody in the house. Great to see you guys. Um, yes, yeah, so we have had a crazy busy week, and I think we're going to have another crazy busy week this week. Yeah, um, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I, we really haven't quite stopped. <laughs> And I'm not mad about it. It's been great, honestly. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, love finding yeah. vintage. Love staying busy. We did get a chance to head an estate sale over the weekend, which was nice. So we do have some fresh picked pretties coming to you, and then we also, like I said, have some great antiques tonight as well. So I'm happy to see all of you guys in the house. And um, how is everybody? It's Sunday fun day. So you know what that means. We're doing giveaways for trivia. And um, it is going to be a really good night. And the best part is, yes, that, okay, can we just talk about how fun <laughs> Thursday night was? Like, my oh word. My gosh. Rapid fire excitement. Like, everybody, you know, including Greta and... Um, Steve-O, everybody was just so excited. It was just so much energy. So yeah, it was yeah. awesome, awesome energy. And um, we only got a quarter of a way through Greta's shop. It's called Super Junk uh, in Monument, Colorado. If you get a chance, definitely go check the replay um, and see how fast and furious it went. We did 10 second countdowns. And everybody got to claim the things that they wanted, been on other things. We had alien cupies handmade by my girl Greta herself. Those are all sold out, but guess what? She's making more. And I know Karen says, I want to live in Greta's shop. I know, right? It is so cool. And it's really so much fun to just go in there and look around at everything. Um, we haven't even gotten to the miniature section. You guys will just die. Um, oh and we have the whole other side as well. So um, guess what? Wednesday night, we decided, let's go again. And Greta said, when can we do this again? And I said, well, interestingly enough, um, let's shoot for this Wednesday. So we are going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern this Wednesday with another live shop with me going from Super Junk at Greta's. And we're basically going to pick up right where yep. we left off. So that way you guys get to see everything. If she's added anything new this week, I'll definitely be showing it to you. And uh, so we're going to do another live shop with me for the Coleman Collective Wednesday night at our normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern. So definitely tune in. It's going to yeah. be, yeah, it was, Phil, adrenaline kicking, epic sale. We had a blast. And Greta just wanted me to personally thank all of you. She does not like to be on camera, um, but she wanted everybody to know how much she appreciated you guys being there and supporting her small business as well as mine. It was, it was everything. And God, it was such a fun night. So we're going to do it again. Okay. Um, yes. Wednesday night, mark your calendars. We're doing it for the Coleman Collective. It's going to be okay. epic. You know what I want to do right now is say hi to everybody in the house. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Lisa's here. Hey, Lisa. Welcome. Welcome. As you guys know, if you've ever been to one of my sales, Lisa is our resident bid ender and you are going to be racing her for the bid ends. Um, please do make sure to refresh. Um, and make sure you're in live chat or all messages. If you're in top chat and you're watching from like an iPad or a tablet um, or even your phone, sometimes it can throw you into that weird top chat. So um, just hit that little drop down carrot of an arrow and make sure that you are in live chat or all messages. Yes, we do not do any just in case bids on this channel. 
who we used to a long time ago and found it's much easier without. So um, no just-in-case bids. And yes, a bid is a promise to pay, clearly. Um, if you have never purchased from us before, um, what we need from you is your real name, your YouTube name, and your PayPal email with your shipping address sent to ttbsaracy at gmail.com. OK, um, yes. And if you don't have a PayPal account, don't worry about it. Um, you can pay with any credit card with the link we send you. OK, so that's pretty much how that works. Just make sure to email us that info right here to our email address. So thank you, Lisa, for dropping all of that. I appreciate it much. And go get your shower, girl. We haven't even started yet. Okay, and, you might be in the shower right now. And might be I mean, I can Hey, if you're listening from the shower and scrub a dub, sister. Hurry okay. up. We're waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, too fun. So Anne is here. We got Kathy Plunk at the house. Hey Kathy. Yep. How are you enjoying your little ducky guy? Let me know how you love him. He's so cute. Hi, Wordsmith. Oh, yep. Shepherd Pie. I tell you what, Evelyn sounds like she cooks some really good stuff. That sounds wonderful. Um, so what did we have, honey? Tell him. What did we have? Oh man, we had Sarah's pot roast and oh my gosh, it's been cooking all day. And oh man, I, I love it. An extra meat because that's the way I go, but like carrots and potatoes. So roast. we had that. Well, the only reason we have extra meat is roast at the grocery store where buy one, get one. Yeah. So we were like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to eat on pot roast for several days. Um, pot roast sandwiches, and then we put the little fingerling caters in there and carrots and all that. But it's it's so. perfect timing, too, because the snow is starting to come in. We're going to have yeah. a little bit of snow tonight, but not too much. Well, it was so nice. We were actually sitting on the patio yesterday and part of today playing with the dogs. And now mm -hmm. it's cold again, and we're going to have snow. And I'm just like, no more snow. <laughs> No more snow. No. Tricky is kicking. Good to see you. Mostly lurking tonight. That is great. We're just happy you're here. Kathy's having cheeseburgers. That sounds pretty darn good, too. We had that one night this last week. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Kelly Abbott is here. Kelly Abbott, I have your kitty from Greta's, um, and I'll be invoicing for everything from this last week, Wednesday night. Thursday night shop with me and tonight all combined into one invoice tomorrow. Invoices will go out tomorrow. tomorrow. I thought you were going to say, Kelly, I've got your kitty cat. I'm holding it for ransom. You oh, know. no. That would be. Bucky. Bucky would totally do that. Hey, that's terrible, David. I would never hold a kitty cat for ransom. I, I don't believe you. I, don't I would believe not do that. I would not. Get into the yard, this, this fur. How that fur get in the yard? That is not nice. You put that away. That's making me very sad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, look what you did to Bucky. We're starting out with a sad Bucky. Damn, damn it. Oh, my God. Hello. Bless <laughs> our friend and Coleman Cultist Chatters indeed. Hello. Hello. Love to see you guys. Our girl Karen is here. Hello, Karen. Make hey. sure to subscribe to Karen Chase and Vintage's channel if you would. While you're here, show her some love. She is doing the videos and doing the live sales and doing the thing. And we couldn't be happier for her. So show some love and subscribe to Karen Jason Vintage. Absolutely. Karen Lord, it's great to see you. Thank Another you. one of our magnificent Karens. We have all the Karens and the Susans in our chat. And I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Hello, Dusty Moose. Thank it is great. You, Michelle, how are you? And Jim is in the house. Hello, darling. Good to see you. We've got Miss Philomena here. Hey, hey, hey. Sharice is here. Hi, Sharice. Great to see you. Thank you for being here. And simply shenanigans with all the shenanigans. And our Miss Arvuvu down there in Florida. Hello, Susan. How are you? You can tell we know all of you guys and where you live because you're yeah, all. <laughs> <laughs> but like not in a weird way. Like I just know what state. I don't in actually. In a practical agree. way. In a practical right. way. Yeah. Right. Out of my my shipping brain, I know what state you're in. Hi, Tammy right. Renee Walker. How are you? Thank you so much. Right. Wasn't that fun? Oh my really goodness. Great. It was such a fun night. Hi, Brad. Great to see you in the house right. here. And there's my girl Bridget. That's right. Yeah. Yes, Bridget. And there's Amy. Hi, Amy Spotty. Good to and see you. And I responded you. to your email. I think we got you squared away. Yes, Amy, we got you squared away. We just saw your email. Yes, 
Yes. Hi, Victoria. How are you? Great to see you here with us as well. And there's our girl, Terry. Hello. Yes. Happy Great. Palm Sunday to all of you out there that observe. Hello. Hello. And you're probably wondering, are we going to be live next week on Easter? Yes, we do plan on it in the evening. So let me ask you guys truly, how many of you guys would want to come hang out on Easter evening at our regular time? Just kind of give me an idea in the chat if you'll be around. If you won't, no big deal. Uh, but that gives us an idea of what we want to do because we plan on having the sale. But if not, a lot of peeps are going to be around. We might not. Hey, Janet, great to see you. And Peachy Me said, hey, 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 it's Peachy Me. Love it. Love that energy. Grandma, hello. Great to see you. V says the area is having internet issues. Oh, poop. I hope so, too. Me, too. That's so frustrating. Don't you hate it when the Wi-Fi acts squirrely? Hi, Stacey. How you doing, honey? Good to see you in the chat tonight. How I was are surprised you? about that at Super Junk. Yeah, we had really good connection for that whole feed. Yeah, I was so, so that's hard to do sometimes. Yeah, well, we were really close to the mountains too, and you just never know because it's kind of sketch. Never. So, um, yeah, streaming was great. Karen Williams, what's kicking? Got your box <laughs> wine in the house. Good to see you. Robin's here. Hello, and there's our Laza. Oh. Hey, Laza, yeah. how are you, hun? Great to see you tonight. Scrolling down. Anne's back. How was the shower? Hi, how was the shower? We can talk about you, not in a weird way. Uh, but we were just like, Anne's in the shower. She'll be back soon. That was a fast one, by the way. Good for you. Yes, I got one just a bit ago myself. It felt great. Hi, Regina. How are you? Good to see you. Hi, well, in the house. And there's Sarah, renovative home. Hello. Oh, good. You said little ducks hanging out with all your vintage Easter plush. I love that. Oh, cool. um, so that, that was such a cute one. I was really thinking about keeping it. I was <laughs> um, such a cutie. Laura Orton's here. Hey, Laura. thank you so much. Well, we're doing it again. If you missed it, um, we are going Wednesday night at 7 p.m. back to Greta's to do another live shop with me. And we're going to just pick up where yep. we left off. So it's going to keep on being a to be continued because there's just so much to see in there. Yeah, just it's so fun. It's really, truly a lot to get through. Just a lot. Yes. Rosie Clover said got seven inches of snow in Wisconsin last Friday. Ooh. Well, hot dog, you're right there with us. It's about to snow again. Poop. Yeah. Over it. Ugh. Yes. Out of town, make it if possible. Home in time, I will. I'll be here. I'll be around. Okay. So a lot of you guys will be around. That's great, Karen Chase. Yes. And that's the thing. Please celebrate with your families. Enjoy. Do bunnies and eggs and all the festivities that you enjoy on that day um mm -hmm. and we will try to be here maybe we'll do like i think last year we did an easter chat so maybe yeah, we'll do we'll like, a chat, chat, yeah. like a mini sale or something i don't know i'll let you guys know throughout the week though i'll know by what we're doing with that being what sarah just said make sure you're um in our facebook group if you want to keep up with everything too because and i know uh I know we've got the link up below, up, up top and also in the description. So okay. definitely worth being in there and you'll see all the things coming. Yes. And please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you have not already. What's kicking, Shirley B? It is great to see you as well. I'm going to be making bunnies out of mashed taters. That sounds divine. I'm going to need pictures okay. of that pictures, please. Hi, Dana. How's it going? There is our bug, mediocre arts and crafts friend with the best funny name ever. Oh, hello. All right, you guys. So question, if you have won um, Coleman Cash in the past, I need you to let me know if you purchase something and I can apply your Coleman Cash to your purchase. Um, if you win tonight, you've got 30 days to use it until April 24th. So um, just let me know whenever you want to use it. Um, and yeah, we're all really waiting in anticipation for mashed potato bunnies. Less. Anticipation. <laughs> it's going to be that's awesome. Heck yeah. Um, David, you want to give like yeah. a little rundown of, of yeah. the stuff? I know I pretty much already did it, but. We pretty much got it. But yeah. So we're going to show you an item and it's just like an auction would be. So we're going to show you the starting price. It'll show up on the screen. And, um. If you're interested in that item, all you have to do is put the dollar amount in. We ask that you bid in increments of dollar um, or more, you know, but not 50 cents or anything like that. That's right. And, you know, I will say I'm pretty sure this Wednesday night on the shop with me, I'm pretty sure in the littles, BK is going to be involved. So oh, yes. he's, he's really interested in those littles. Um, but anyway, so if you're interested in those items, you can bid on it. 
we'll, uh, if there's more than one person interested, it'll be an auction. And then we'll count down from 15. And once you hear that countdown, that means it's, we're going to be getting that bid end pretty quick. So you want to put in your highest bid that you're willing to pay. Um, and that is um, a promise to pay if you do win. Once we get the bid in, we see it on our end a little bit different than you may on your end. Uh, when we see the, the highest bidder, we'll announce it. And if there's choice, the lower bidders will get a chance at some of the things that weren't picked by the initial bidder. So super easy. Um, the first item that I'm going to be bringing is a little choice. So that's a great way to, if this, this is your first time, to see how it goes. Super simple. Super simple. That's pretty Super much simple. it. Yeah. Becky just wanted to say hi because it's so close to Easter. Hi, Wildflower. How you doing, honey? Good to see you. Sherry Nameless in the house. Hey, hey Sherry. Good to see you. Hey, Brad the Bold. I know. we're gonna, Brad, we promise we won't auction off your body parts tonight, okay? Uh, <laughs> it's me, Buttercup, and I'm so excited because it's almost Easter, and that's when my flower blooms. Yeah. Oh, I love it, winter flower blooms. That's so special. Have you seen my Christmas tree? It's about to get snow on it again, damn it. Yeah, I noticed it hasn't been growing this uh, spring. Hey, that's not very nice, mister. I wouldn't More say that. Sun. You need to get closer to the sun. Hey. That's You're science. looking kind of pale. You're peaking, fella. You're looking a little peaking. <laughs> I'm peaking. <laughs> All that pot roast. <laughs> it's a pot roast, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Extra salty today, might I add? <laughs> I was like, man, I need to add some more water to this. It's a little salty. <laughs> yes. Um, how quick can you get hairless? What? I, oh, hairless. Hairless. Okay. <laughs> You're killing me. Okay. I was like, how quick can you get hairless? What is going on? You're shaving. You're hairless. And Spotty has a cat named Super Cooper Pooper Scooper. All right. No, Super Pooper. My bad. Not Pooper Scooper. That's a lot to say. And the cats have been stealing the eucalyptus that we sent from the elephant planter. I love it. That's a fun toy for, for the kitty cats. That's great. I love it. All right. Well, enough of the blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and get this party started. We have a lot to get to tonight. Lots of glowy glass. Um, some wonderful antiques. Antique ephemera stuff. Um right. And pretties, lots of pretties. So, um, David, I'm going to make you start. Hold on, I'm going to put you up here. There we go. All right. So, like I said, I have a little choice going on here, and I'm starting at four dollars for choice. Oh, so, nice. we're going to start off with the biggest dog. They're all puppies, and I would consider them all terriers. Now, this one right here, I can't tell if that's a break or if that's just how it was made during manufacturing because the yellow that's on the tip of it exactly matches and has the same so i, I think, think it's like a short tail yeah it's a terrier tail like a short terrier tail but he is like that nice cream color with the white and these this guy's ceramic you've got the yeah. maiden pan on the bottom um next up i have another terrier he's white and like uh chocolate and tan uh -huh. and he's got that little you know hip and you know he's walking getting all excited he's looking for his fire hydrant he does not have oh yeah he does i thought he didn't he's got his japan stamp right there just kind of hiding under his leg Cute. so that's the second little guy great for the little shelves um next up i have this one is wooden it's a wooden oh. carved there we go or like a resin type of wood he's cute yeah and he, he could be touched up if you are a crafty person but i like the patina on him He's and cool. he's a little fella. Then we have, um, this is a little rubber, rubber toy Scotty. Hey, little rubber toy Scotty. And he's all black. That's the kind of Scotty I grew up with. Looking just like that. Um, great for the Scotty collectors as well. And then last but not least, we have a very old black Scotty. And let's get him to show your eyes, buddy. Show your eyes. Okay, they're yeah. hand-painted cold paint. Yeah, ceramic and just like that really nice cold paint and still on there. So I know, Scotties are so cute. I love the terrier, uh, the beards, you know, that they always have. And then I'm going to just kind of set them up here so you can see. Just some fun terriers to put in your littles display. Precious. I love it. Yeah, he's a little black licorice guy. Yeah. Aww, those are so cute. Adopt me. Adopt me, please. Adopt a wee puppy. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start a countdown. Les is in at four. 
If anybody else wants to get in, come in at five. And here goes the countdown. They're all for choice. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid in. Woof. Woof. How Woof. cute. Yeah, those are really fun. Cute little Ficatis. Mm -hmm. Perfect for your miniature shelves. I know we always try to bring miniatures uh, to every sale because they're so fun to collect. And I love the little vintage doggies. Those are great. All right. There's our bid in. So Les, we'll just go. Um, we're going to do the black together. This guy's together and brown over here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, and five. So one, two, it's kind of like the uh, lineup at the dog show. Dog show. Let's get to pick. Dog show. Who's the winner of the dog show? Hello, friends. Yes, welcome in. Okay, three and four, she said. Okay, so these other three, the three Scotties, will come back for the recap. Oops. Thank you, Les. Awesome. All righty. Let's see. I am going to start out with a really little, pretty little piece I found in an estate sale this weekend. And I um, gravitated to it because, of course, it's Italian pottery. And the carvings are gorgeous on it. I'm going to start this at 24. And I'm going to get you in close so you can really see the carvings. Now, everything, when I looked this up, everything that popped up was Majolica. Do I know if it's Majolica? No, I do not. Here are the markings on the bottom. So I'm just calling it Italian pottery, but usually um, with the B somewhere in there and the numbering, we know it could be Majolica, but I can't say for certain, okay? So look at this side. This was the side that really drew me in. It looks almost like a great big Gerbera daisy. And yeah. I just think that is so pretty. And the relief that is cut into it has a great sculpt into it. It's right about seven inches tall. It does have a little spout. So technically it is a ewer, um, but I I would use it as a vase, honestly. Um, in fact, Trippy, if you're here, the way that you displayed your Trader Joe's flowers in um, your Italian pottery piece is perfect. Just absolutely yeah. perfect. I thought of you when I found this. Um, just so cute. And I, it's got little blue flowers that kind of go all the way around and then meet the blue flowers from this particular one. So they have the same accents. The colors are nice and rich. No chips or cracks or anything. Um, you've got a really nice kind of a, a medium blue handle on it. And then the line around the bottom is just slightly lighter. So again, can't say for sure if it is Majolica, but it certainly resembles uh, Majolica. And it does have the markings on the bottom. Right. Italian pottery. So really pretty piece. And I like too that you've got both sides to display. So if you like this one or you get tired of this, you can always turn it this way and then put some flowers in it that match. It's just gorgeous. And I see you in at 24. Thank you so much. I'm going to start a countdown guys. Um, if anybody else wants to get in, no, just in case bids. And here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Looking for a bid end. Maybe Majolica, maybe not. I don't know. But certainly looks like it. Yeah. So pretty. I like the fat handle too. I like that it's nice and wide. Absolutely. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Really pretty piece. Yes. Straight out of the estate sale. And Dimkin, you have this gorgeous Italian pottery you are coming to. Thank you so much. So apparently Les's dog used to be named Todd. Now it's Flash. <laughs> so I like Flash. Flash used to be Todd. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> nope. All right. So um, here we go. We've got some antiques. Let's go ahead and start with the advertisement piece. This is early 1900s. These are very collectible. Use, um, if you find them online, usually starting about 20, uh, selling for about 30 in mm -hmm. this condition. Great condition. It's the Colgate, um, the Colgate Company shaving tin container. It's nice and clean. Pop it open. And there's just a few like crinkles in it. Otherwise, I mean, it is in excellent condition. 
great for your antique display, especially if you're into the advertisements. It does still screw all the way down as well. You can use it for like a snuff container or use it as a little hidey space or travel with it even. So that's your, that's, that's your first uh, piece here. Second piece is another antique piece. And I think this is great to have in your kitchen. Um, I know some of you guys know what this is. This is a cool. lid loosener or a jar opener for mason jars and such. This cool. is still intact, so definitely can be used, but um, great for a display piece. Um, and the metal is like, it's an iron. So nice, thick metal. That's so cool. When we found this, I was like, I have no idea what this is. David's like, I think it's a jar opener. Yeah. And this, this estate sale, they had a lot of primitives and old stuff. I could only afford a certain amount of things. Uh, this was one of the things that was in with some of the primitives. And the fact that it still works well is great. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's kind of crazy, right? <laughs> right. And then this piece was also there. Had to grab it. So yeah. $16 for choice. And like if you have those mason jars, like a display, this is great to have hanging with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my mother had oh, some. Oh, no, for pulling it out. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And grabbing it and pulling it out. Yeah. But I thought it would also pop it open. I guess not. But and the joint that's done on it, it's like riveted in. So I'll show you on the back side here. Newer ones will have like bolts on them. That's crazy. Well, it's heavy duty. I mean, it's stuck around for a long time, especially yeah. if you have Very a nice. kitchen. What a fun thing to have. Um, I know some people used to do canning. Some people still do canning. It does yeah. look slightly torturous. Yeah. 50 shades. Yeah. Of, you know. <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. But, um, so I'm not seeing any interest. We can go ahead and bring these back at the recap. Um, yeah. Probably you'll see some of these like at old barns and stuff like that for sure. Yes, yeah. that is so crazy. Right, I'll bring these back okay, to the funny story about the name Todd, Once Upon a Time. <laughs> um, and it's really not funny. Once I tell it, you'll be like, oh. But Once Upon a Time, David had a bone tumor. And it was really serious and scary. But we joked about it all the way through. This was like 2008-9. And uh, it was benign, thank goodness. But it was big. It was like the size of a fist. And he had to have it removed from his hip. And do you know what it was named? We named it. What did you name it? I named it Todd. <laughs> That's right. We got, yeah, yeah, we got the uh, we got the uh, X-ray and all that, and Todd. <laughs> yeah. it Todd. We put a face on the X-ray, named it Todd. Uh, <laughs> you know, we had to have fun with Todd the bone tumor. So right. anyway, fun story. We have a Todd story too. Ours is kind <laughs> of twisted, but that's <laughs> just that's how we roll. <laughs> And this is what we used to pop it off. We just took this and just clamped it on. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> God. God, David, that's creepy. Evil. Some medieval nonsense. Yeah. Okay. So I have four of these beautiful uh, sets available. And let me tell you about the rabbit hole that I went down to find out what these are. So these are saucer and teacup sets. Look at that funky little. Uh, 1920s Art Deco looking handle. And um, like I said, I've got four of these available. I'm starting them at 20 for the teacup and the saucer. And yes, thank goodness it was benign. It was not, not a fun surgery. Um, okay. Yeah, not a good time. But um, so these are octagonal. So what's neat about them is you've got eight different paneled sides. So in looking at what brand of depression glass I had here, um, these did come from an estate sale where, where everything was antique-ish. Um, I cannot find these. What I came to finally with the octagonal shape is they're either Cambridge glass or perhaps Fostoria because the um, handle, the only handles I could find that were exactly like this were made by Fostoria. But I never found a paneled pattern through Fostoria. The only one that did the paneled pattern was Cambridge glass. So I can't tell you what brand these are for sure, but I can tell you they are gorgeous, they glow beautifully, and they are antique. Um, we know that much. They are green depression glass. And uh, they are just beautiful. No chips or cracks or issues with any of them. 
and I have four sets of the teacup and the saucer. And let, look at the little saucer too. I love the way the saucer kind of is like a little bowl almost. Yes, yes. A wonderful, yummy uranium glass, no markings on these. And um, again, you see there's eight sides to these. Um, and they do, they just look like magic. And the glow on these is simply spectacular. Uh, very bright, very pretty. And there are four available. So um, great to add to your collection. I can guarantee you no one else is going to have this pattern because it's so freaking hard to find. Very and hard. Um, Lisa went down the rabbit hole with me for a while and we looked and looked and looked. And this pattern is rare. Um, it is not one that you see every day, especially with that funky little Art Deco handle. But I love the paneling. It kind of gives it more of a mod feel, right? Yeah. They don't look antique, but they are. These are um, antique and they have eight sides that are paneled, that yummy little D-ring handle. And I believe they may be Cambridge glass, but I cannot say for sure because I couldn't find them. I never right. could find this exact one. And there are some that look exactly like it, but the handle's different. There are some that are shaped slightly different and more um, vertical, if you will. So I don't know. But yeah, sip your green tea in style with a little glow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Smith. They're just so pretty. Kelly Abbott, I see you in at 20. If anybody else wants to get in on these, I have four sets available. They are antique and they uh, came from the estate sale this weekend. No chips, cracks, or issues. Let's count them down Looking for 21 or more. Here we go. 15. Whoa. <laughs> 14. I couldn't think. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Bid end. This is a crazy good deal for these. Yeah, it is. Very good deal on these. Four available with the teacup and saucer. <laughs> Sherry, uh -huh. Sherry, we could all drink. Um, we could have our uranium tea night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hot, yeah. hot uranium toddies. Right? <laughs> that could be fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. There's my bid end. Miss Kelly Abbott, let me know, girl, how many you would like of these. Four are available. And then whatever you don't take will be available in the recap. Really good price. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Perfect. Um, it is time for our first giveaway. Shall oh we God. do it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want to go ahead? Home and cash, yeah? Kelly's going to take them all. I don't blame you. That is a great right. price, Kelly. Thank you. And they are rare. And the sugar and creamer that matches them is coming up soon. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. So since I am up here on the screen, I will show you your first giveaway. All right. Here it is. It's a little three trio of cuteness. We do have Coleman Cash coming too. So hang tight. Oh, okay. All right. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get, I'm helping Smokey prevent forest fires. It's a little pin badge. You're going to get a peanut eraser from the 1980s. And you're going to get this cute little mushroom that has a cork as its stem. Okay. So you're going to get all three of these things. If you are interested in winning these fun littles, here is your 80s trivia question. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. What Condé Nast magazine was revived in 1981 after a 48-year hiatus? First person. Yes, have tea with the cats, Kelly. I love that. Um, what Condé Nast magazine was revived in 1981 after a 48-year hiatus? Atus. Close. Yes, Les got it. Congratulations, Les. Vanity Fair is the correct answer. And you have won these little kitschy cuties. So thank you so much, Les. Put them in your funsy shelves. Awesome. And I have got you down for those. The next giveaway will be Coleman Cash and it'll be at 7 p.m. All right. Awesome. So um, congrats, Les. So my next items are some antiques. Anytime we go to an estate sale, I'm looking for knives. This time I was able to get some that were a decent price. So um, first off for choice. And I'm thinking, you know, we've got Father's Day coming up soon, but also it's nice to have these 
around the house, especially if you're getting a package from us, because I know I use some packaging <laughs> to get it there. Um, so this first one, it could be sharpened if you wanted to sharpen it, um, but it is that nice opal and it's made by Imperial. Um, it's the two blade and I believe it's from the early 60s. I couldn't date it for sure, um, but we'll get in close on that there. So in, made by Imperial, um, stainless steel, and the mar the um, opal opal is not damaged anywhere in there, which is also pretty nice to have. So um, that is your first choice. Great for a display, but also great to use. The second one I have is a really beautiful stiletto. Now this is made in China by Fury in the 70s. Now the Italian ones are worth probably two to three times as much as these, but they're still really nice stilettos. So, um, hey Randy. So there's the Fury mark on there and then it's numbered. Um, and it's a nice, heavy, heavy blade and it's very sharp. You've got that black handle and then the brass as well. And then I'll show you that blade. It's just in excellent condition. Yes, Robin, my grandpa had one too. Yeah, these are excellent to have um, on you for multiple reasons, protection, but also, um, you know, if you like to whittle, I remember my grandpa always whittled with his stiletto and it collapses down nice and safe and it does have the safety down here. Hey, Trina, so $15 for choice. I know um, it takes the right person that wants something like that, but I thought I'd bring him. Hey, Patty, it's good to see you as well. And once again, 15 for choice. Oh, cool. oh, yeah, Wordsmith, yeah. Well, and, and those are me antiques as well. You know what I mean? If you have yeah. Father's Day coming up in June or, you know, a guy in your life that likes the old knives, I think these are really great. Yeah. Les yeah. is in at 15 and so is Anne. I see you ladies. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I will go ahead and start a countdown, just kind of give you an idea what they look like. And then a size... This one, oh, it goes about 10 inches long. So that's a big one. I don't think you can fly with something like this. So just don't heads up. In your, don't pack that in your uh, carry-on. No. no, no. Okay, so here we go. Um, Les is in at 15. I see you as well, Anne. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bit end. Yes, I got in a lot of trouble as a kid because I would get little pocket knives for Christmas. I was a little cowboy. Um, and then I would take them to school and get in trouble. I wouldn't like do anything bad with them, but I would show them to my buddy like, look at my pocket knife. I'm going to whittle something and then bam, no that knife for David. would probably get you expelled. Yeah. Right, right. Brian says okay. Imperial knives used to be manufactured in Providence, Rhode Island. That's really cool. Oh, I didn't know that. awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Les, you get first choice. Let me know if you want the stiletto or if you want the pocket knife. And then, Anne, you'll get second choice. Right. Nice. You're right, PG Me. And that's good, yeah. Okay, so Les, I got you for the stiletto. And nice. then, Anne, let me know if you are interested in the pocket knife. If not, just put pass, and I'll bring it back for the recap. Awesome. Thanks, Les. All righty. I am going to, let's see here. I'm going to go this way. So I have something very beautiful, very special um, that I picked up. Gotcha. And it's truly an antique, truly. Okay, Anne's going to take the pocket. You got Thank it. Thank you, guys. Fantastic, ladies. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, you could cut the pot off, David, with that stiletto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, we were out and about in Denver and I found this stunning album. The oldest piece, and I'm going to tell you, this is full of antique ephemera, about 120 years old. Everything in here is from the 1890s. Some of it's older. Some of it's like 1893, 1899. Um, so I'm just going to show you, and I'm going to let you look first. You've got birds that are perched on this branch and that really pretty, pretty gold gilt all the way around. And then even the album font is a branch from the tree, which I think is just 
stunning. Yeah, the cover alone is like, oh, yeah. okay, let's get into it to all of what? wonderful 18... 90s goodness. This uh, appears to be from Stahl Brothers, which I think might have been like either a hardware store right. or a seed place where you got seed. On. What is your starting price? Uh, starting price on this is 58 okay. And it's because of the age. Again, 1890s and older. Um, the oldest piece of ephemera I found dated in here is 1890, but I can't see the back of all of these. So there may be some that are actually older. Wow. And I'm going to try to get you in as best I can on every piece of ephemera. You're just going to die once you see this. It's so spectacular. Dusty, I see you, Michelle, in at 58. Thank you, love. Um, so many different pieces. There are postcards. There are seed packet advertisements. Um, there are little stamps that you might affix to a card. Um, lots of interesting advertising. It is for its age. Again, I can't believe that I'm holding something that is still intact. This is an Easter page, by the way. I don't know if you can see that, but you've got uh, the little bunny running away. And that is an antique postcard that is affixed on. Now, if you're one of those people that wants to deconstruct it, more power to you. Um, this is a baby portrait and someone wrote Emma under it. There's also a newspaper clipping and there's several newspaper clipping and clippings in here from the 1800s. This one is the last hymn by Marianne Farningham. The Sabbath, the Sabbath day was ending in a village by the sea. And um, it talks about the benediction and it's a really pretty hymn. Then this postcard, we've got little dude that's just drowning in the water. Um, and then let me get to some of the dated pieces too. These pages are so fragile. I'm trying to go very slowly. Um, yeah. That is an advertising piece right here. Um, under the cartoon, it says, Cupid caught napping where a hoarding, a boarding house landlady at Lowell, Massachusetts found her dear daughter at an early hour Monday morning. And the daughter looks like she's fallen asleep with someone that stayed there at the boarding house. I don't know. Uh -oh. Then we have what looks like um, kitties playing and maybe perhaps a birth announcement of some sort. And then you do have all of the relief style uh, hand samples that almost look like an antique calling card. Um, more precious baby pages, more floral pages. Okay. Um, this one is the Ladies Perfumed Calendar of 1893. Hoyt's German Cologne and Rubifoam for the Teeth. Our Nation's Choice, copyright 1883, and then 1893 is the date on that ad. And I just can't believe these pages are even intact yeah. after all these years. With best wishes for your good health, Dr. M.D. Dennis, New York. So that would have been like the Dennis calling card. How fancy. Wow. Um, yeah, depart from inequity. Restore the eternal. Um, Christ died for the lots of religious pretties in here. And then look at the little fairies. I mean, uh, you rarely ever see old antique fairies. And I love that little um, postcard of them. And um, this is Hood Sarsaparilla. Makes the week strong. I thought that was great. <laughs> um, we have a Happy New Year card in here from Mrs. Bickford. And then this has a little bit of lace that has come off, but I'm going to include it in here because it can be fixed. It's affixed to that right there. Um, just stunning. So much fun. So this whole thing is full. And then we get to the white sail, which is a poem. And it is dated Laconia, January 17th, 1899. Then we have Taylor Twitchell. A wedding announcement that looks like it took place August 12th, but we don't have a year. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, 1800s. There are a few blank pages. There's like three blank pages towards the back. And then we pick up again 
with more cards. It's just stunning. Everything in here is beautiful. The cards alone are worth more than 58. And then Whoa. you add a beautiful album. And then look at the back. They have affixed all yeah. kinds of different cards also uh, to the back as well. It's just well, it's epic. It's so nicely done too. Like all this, this pictures are, are, are hanging in there straight they're nice and lined up yeah and it's i mean we're looking at what 130 ish years yeah. old i mean it, it's the fact that it's the bindings even good is epic to me yeah. so yes 1890s and older scrapbook album wonderful all kinds of wonderful ephemera pages we are at 60 with tammy i'm gonna start a countdown yeah i know laza isn't it so sweet butterflies pulling fairies um sweet little winter scene with a little girl and the deer all kinds of pretty florals um, it's like these are probably cards and calling cards from everyone that they knew there's poetry um Let's see. Emma Twitchell celebrated her 11th birthday Monday evening. Invitations were given to all her young friends at the residence of Mr. and Mrs. H.C. Twitchell, which was filled with a merry party of little folks, as you would find in many a day. They had a jolly time. Games were played. Ice cream cake indulged. And Miss Emma was the recipient of numerous pretty presents. Wow. May she live to enjoy such great many more such a happy occasion. Well, it's all written so flowery, you know? Yeah. Ugh, every, this whole thing is spectacular. Let's count it down. We are at 60 with Tammy. Um, I know Dusty was in at 58. This whole thing, yes, I agree, has been curated with talent. This whole thing right. is like a mini time capsule from the late 1800s. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. This is the hymn that fell out. Looking for a bit end. Absolutely stunning. Thank you guys so much for all of the bids. I see you. Ooh, Cardi and King getting right out in front of Dusty. Oh my gosh, you guys are killing me. Who's going to get it? Oh my God, the suspense. I know. I, know. I can't watch the lag. Oh my God. I can't watch. There's the bid in from Lisa. Cardigan wow. King won at 90. Congratulations. Wow, you came. Your 93 came in after the bid in. Thank you so much, Jim. Enjoy this. Um, yeah. Jim had messaged me on, on Instagram about this and it is. It's spectacular. So congratulations. Have fun pouring through it. It's such a lovely piece. We'll get yeah. it to you um, with love. Yay, yeah. congrats. Thanks for all the bids, guys. Congrats. That was beautiful, Sarah. Thanks. All right. So I have, I'm bringing some of my Japanese wooden creatures now. I have another set that I'm bringing a little bit later. Um, I'm starting these off at $25, a really nice price for these. These are from the 60s. So I'm going to show you how they're all marked. Um, so the bottoms are stamped. Okay. And they're stamped with Senshu Kai. Um, these are royal pets, were what they were called, and they were Japanese wooden pets that were made and uh, only sold through mail order back in the 60s. So you would have to um, wait every month to get the next animal. So it was kind of a suspenseful get, you know, back in the day. Each animal also has their stamp on, somewhere on their body, uh, giving you the name of the actual animal. The pieces of... Uh, all the pieces are made of either plastic, so the feet are plastic. Um, the eyes would be just little beady, little black beads. And then the, the wood itself are all made out of Japanese cedar. So the Japanese cedar is where you're going to find this color, um, which makes them very unique. Now, all of the pieces have movable pieces. So mm -hmm. they're, they're in there. They're not glued in. They're, they were made to be able to display different ways. So let's go ahead and go on. And one other thing that they will have are plastic beaks. Some of them will have plastic for the beaks. So um, let's so go ahead and start. Yeah. So first off, I saw Adam and Susan. Thank you, guys. So we have the pelican. Um, some of these will have their original stickers. 
Um, but they're the ones that don't, uh, I took off any sticker residue that was left over that was kind of making them look a little cruddy. So Pelican is first. Um, he's a cutie. This is the tallest one out of these. This guy is about five inches. He's the condor. And his oh. head will spin all the way around. And oh he's got the plastic beak and then the nice bead eyes. And then that comes down in with the, with the uh, dowel shape and just spins on top. And then he's got wooden feet. He's marked the condor. And um, this one actually doesn't have the stamp on the base. So it just has the condor there. Uh, next up, this is, I think, one of my favorites. It's the ostrich. And it does have uh, the remaining sticker there. So I didn't remove that. If Way for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and ostrich. And this guy spins around. And what's cool is it's an egg. And he's popping out. These are so mid-century fabulous, and the craftsmanship on them is beautiful. I mean, they're all they so really smooth, perfectly yeah. smooth. They are very smooth, soft, and you can clean them off without any issues. Uh, so this one has a little bit of sticker left on his bottom, and he is the Mandarin. So he's got his plastic little beak, and he's got plastic little feet, and mm. then his or his eyes. So a very nice, almost Danish quality, yes. I would say, um, but they are Japanese and the royal pets is what they were called. So I'm going to set them all up so you can see them together. They're this so is cute. the bird selection. We'll put him. I love there. the condor and they all are so um, made to like move and have movement yes. and it's really not, they're so well done. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, the little mandarin duck is precious, isn't it? I know. Yeah, squatting. All right, so these are the choices for this round. Um, once again, 1960s, mid-century, modern, uh, beautiful wood, turned wood, handcrafted in Japan um, okay. with so Japanese cool. cedar. Yes. Oh, so, Japanese cedar. That explains why they're so perfectly yeah. smooth. Yes, yes. So you can't, and you can only get the Japanese cedar in certain places. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and count them down. 15, 14, I see Laza in, thank you. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Fit in, he's turning around. I'm Thanks. afraid. Yeah, thank we you. were just absolutely floored by how cool these were. And the design on each one, I feel like they're very well thought out. They are. Yeah, they're really spectacular. Okay, Susan Arvivu is in at 29. Thank I you, Susan. Surprised. Thank you. There's our bid in from Lisa. Thank right. you so much. So, Susan, let me know. Um, we'll go Mandarin, Ostrich, Condor, Pelican. Super easy. And, yeah, if you have a birdhouse, these would be epic in front of them or inside. Yeah. For sure. Really, I think they would be great too if you have any Jacob Herman birds. Oh um, yeah, I I thrifted years ago a Jacob Herman bird, and have kept it. I've I've never I won't sell it. Um, and these would go really nicely with those. Okay, Susan's here for the ostrich. You got it, girl. Ostrich, thank you, Susan. Laza has next Laza. of the duck, the condor, or the pelican. Yep. And then purple and green. You're after Laza. Perfect. And then Adam, okay? Okay. So, Laza, I got you for the duck. Quack, quack. You got it. Congrats. We have the condor or the pelican. And that's Good going... Good purple for, and green. Yes. And so, purple and green, let me know if you want pelican or condor. And then Adam will be up after that. Those are so cute. Okay, no worries. Purple and green, pass. So, Adam, you get a chance at the ostrich or the condor. Okay. Pass as well. So I think that was everybody. These two will come back for the recap. Thank okay. you, guys. Fantastic. God, those are so cool. Yes. Okie dokie. Next up for me, speaking of Japan, we are going to go this way. And I am very, very pleased to have found a fun little set um, that I can do for choice. And they are all fun, kitschy Japanese items. The first one up, and I'm starting this choice, David, at $10. Okay. And the first one in the choice is this darling little bento box. And this is made of painted um, 
enamel. It is kind of like a, uh, it's like a plastic Bakelite type of material. It's not Bakelite, but um, if you have any bento boxes, you know what these are made out of. And I love it because it makes a perfect trinket dish. But also people used to cook in these. You would put rice in one, veggies and meat in the other, um, and serve them. I think she makes a super sweet trinket dish. And again, we have been watching Shogun and enjoying all of the beautiful traditional Japanese yeah. outfits. Um, it's it's just, if you guys have not watched the new Shogun, you should. It's really good. Um, it's a little violent, of course, but it's very good. We love it. It's been quite good yeah. so far. So she is such a little cutie, as you can see, in her kimono, sweetly hand painted. This is the back side. Okay. And you do have the two different compartments. So she's going to be choice number one, our sweet little Kokeshi bento box. All right. Choice one there. Choice number two is super cool. And these go online for like 50 to $90. I'm not asking that for where it because I don't have hardly anything in it. But if you know what this little gal is, she actually is a Sekiguchi Monchichi. And she is kawaii straight from Japan. She is um, the maple autumn kimono style Monchichi. She has a pacifier that comes in and out of her little mouth. <laughs> yeah, you can tell by her eyes if you have ever um, gotten into any of the Japanese kawaii brands. Sekiguchi made little dolls. They made a line of manchichis. Um, and this particular manchichi's name is Bibichichi, which I love to say. That's <laughs> okay. So this poor little name is Bibichichi. And <laughs> she is absolutely precious in her kimono. I'm going to stick her a little pacifier back in her mouth. This is how she came. She's got little maple leaves in her hair that are making her have little pigtails. Her kimono is precious. And look at the bell sleeves in the kimono. Very, very traditional and darling. Little plastic hands coming out of there. And then the backside even has the uh, kimono bow. I can't remember the name for it. It has a particular name. But right. so, so she's really soft. She's in great shape. There's her little feet. So she will stand flat. Yep you want her to stand just precious so she is choice number two choice number three i absolutely adore these are very old and very cool they are kokeshi jade earrings they are clip earrings and the bead in them is jade let's see if it will glow i didn't even check that earlier um sort of a little bit hundred percent, but a little bit. Yep. Got a little glow to it. Um, and they have sweetly little hand painted faces and they are Kokeshi bead earrings. So they are clip. Um, and they look to date to probably the sixties from everything I could tell on these, but you could convert them into pierced earrings if you wanted to. But I love the little hand painted faces. They're just yeah. super sweet. All right, so these are going to be your choices, okay? Is it, or is it called an obi? An obi, yeah, that sounds right. The um, kimono sash had a particular name. That sounds right, you guys. I couldn't remember what it was. So these are going to be the choices, okay? We've got the beautiful little Japanese bento box, and she is a kokeshi style with no arms. We've got the kokeshi little clip earrings that are just precious. And then we have the little Sekiguchi. If you Google this gal, you'll find her for $70 elsewhere. It's crazy. Uh, the Maple Autumn Kimono Manchichi. So apparently she's kind of rare. Um, and her little clothes do come off. They are Velcro, by the way. So she is just precious. And I'm going to start a countdown. This is for your choice of sweet little Japanese friend. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Looking for a bid end. We see you, Tina. Thank you guys for all the bids. Verlaine, 1,621. <laughs> <laughs> she fixed it real quick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's old. All right. Tina. Tina Bobina. All right. So Tina is the winner. Terry, your 21 came in right after the bid in, sweetheart. 
So Tina Serafin, let me know if you would like the little Sekiguchi doll, if you would like the bento box, or if you would like the cute little earrings. And then it is going to be Verlaine for 21 after Tina. And then Terry is going to be next after Verlaine. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, no. okay Tina wants the... No, Monchichi. You got it, Tina. Super cute. She's so soft, too. You're going to love her. Okay, Verlaine, let me know if you want the little uh, Kokeshi earrings or the bento box. And then... And Terry. Yes, and then Terry. All right. Karen Chase, I see your 23 came in after the bid-in doll. She may be caught up in the lag, yeah. Yeah, she's probably in the lag. Okay, Verlaine's going to pass. No worries. Terry. Then Terry Valenti. Would you like the bento box or the little earrings? Just let me know, Terry. And then behind Terry, I think we had Terza. Yes. Okay. And then behind Terza, we had Peachy. Yes. Okay. And then Karen Chase, I'll honor yours if we get to you. Okay. Terry's gonna both. You've got it, Terry. Those are so cute. Thank you right. so much. Yay. All right, so my next item is a primitive. So um, from the estate sale, and I was I didn't know for sure what they were until I got them home. Um, so I'm selling them together because they were originally sold as a pair. Um, these are antique, um, wit, made by Whitmore. They're wool or cotton carters. So they were made um, to, to align fibers in your wool or your cotton. Uh, they still do have old expressed uh, pieces of wool in there um, from use a long time ago. Um, so they come together. This one is pretty much all intact. This one here has a little bit more wear. You can see it was used quite a bit. Um, however, they're in great condition all the way around. The wood is in excellent condition. Okay, so you card it before you spin it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and yeah, <laughs> don't use for spanking horrible children. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, don't, no. Don't let kids yeah. near these. They're sure. But this would be great if you have a display with some old um, wool blankets, that kind of thing. Um, even with your old quilts, it's just a really cool display. You can either have them wrapped together to, to hang up or just setting up. Um, you can see how the wood is done. They are, you, they have the groove right here and then just straight right up inside and then just the nails, the three nails on this side to hold it all together. So it is a really neatly made piece, very primitive for sure. Um, and no cracking or any damage to the wood. So these would be used basically to, would it comb the wool into? Yeah. So you're like aligning the fibers and I guess before you spin it to, to make it stay nice and straight and flat. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah interesting. so cool. Yeah, uh, that's right. Bridget probably uses the newer ones for her um, her crafts that she does with the felting. Yes. Yeah. Lisa says you can blend wool with them too because Lisa's also a felter. Yeah, that's so cool. Did We found these and we were like, oh my gosh, they're so primitive and old. Yeah. How fantastic. Yeah. It's different to have and great for a display. Think about shelves and different thing like that, things like that. And you mm -hmm. could always put a leather strap around and hang it. Um, and yeah, they could be little paddles just to give a little spankings. Are they coming um, together or are they yeah, coming? Um, they come together. Yeah. Okay. They come together. Yeah, they were always sold in pairs. So I don't know if just kind of like... Psh, 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 just a man. I want to see some uh, video of people using them. So interesting. That's All really right. cool. I yeah. keep learning new stuff as we go to. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard, but we were talking to some people in Denver, and apparently the new trend is primitive is coming back in. So um, yeah. So any type of you know you could literally just put a nail on either side of that little handle and hang it on the wall. Um, oh, yeah like that and it'll slip right on mm -hmm. yes karen is in yeah. at 26 okay peachy says you pull them away from each other like so or do you do them together like uh do you rub them together no no that yeah. would definitely hurt 
Okay. Oh, she says her stepdaughter uses these too. Okay. Oh, that's cool. cool. Well, let's go ahead and count down. Um, slide. Okay. So you slide them. So that way it like. Uh, okay. Now I've got a visual. Okay. Okay. Mary got said it. you can make angry <laughs> and use these, but bunnies are a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I should, yeah. All right, let's go to edit and countdown. <clears throat> so thank you, Karen Chase. They're coming together. Uh, if anybody else wants to get in, you can. 15, 14, 13. I just love how the wood is curved just a little bit. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good end. Very cool. You know, yeah, if you're wanting to, like, um, make a cat fur sweater, there you yeah. go. I mean, you could get your cat fur all spun together. <laughs> That's right. Bad kitty. All right. Well, thank you, Lisa, Karen, Chase. We got you for our um, Carters. That's so exciting. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's do some more crazy glowing glass. Um, I am going to do this big boy right here. And... This uh, is such a beautiful piece. I have sold a biscuit jar similar to this before, but I've never sold this one. Um, I am starting this at 65. And this particular jar is made by Hazel Atlas. And it is a pattern, and I'm going to get try to get you in as close as I possibly can. It's a pattern by Hazel Atlas called Royal Lace. And it is an older piece. This uh, is pretty much antique from everything I read. We're looking at the 1920s for this. And what really took me is how pretty the Royal Lace pattern really is. It's quite intricate with roses in it. And then you also have this lovely Art Deco looking star, which is really pretty on par um, or on course for the time. Right. So this almost reminds me of a teeny tiny mini reamer, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like a little bitty reamer. There are no chips or cracks on the biscuit jar. No issues, no flea bites, no nothing. It is absolutely gorgeous. And um, it's in beautiful shape. This drape pattern and then the lace. I'm going to try, to try to get you in on it. On the sides is floral. And it's just absolutely stunning. Oh, the, the clarity is amazing. This, I'm sorry, honey, what did oh, you I say? I just said the clarity is amazing. Yeah, like the clarity show. really is amazing. And for it to be 100 years old with no chips or cracks tells me that it probably was not really much used. Um, I got this at the same, same estate sale. I got the other green pieces. And um, all of, of her glass was antique. So it's really quite an exceptional piece. And the fact that it has no issues is just, it's next level. It's gorgeous. So Hazel Atlas, as you know, is a um, very collectible brand. And um, had a lot of beautiful pressed glass and depression glass pieces uh, back to the early 1900s, 1920s, and so on. So wow. um, we are at 65 with Kathy. If anybody else wants to get in on this stunning biscuit jar, again, the pattern is called Royal Lace by Hazel Atlas. It is in excellent shape. No chips, cracks, no sick glass, no cloudiness, no weirdness. It is perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to start a countdown, guys. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. The Art Deco drapery on the sides matches that yeah. top. Stunning. Okay, here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end on this antique biscuit jar from the early 1920s. We're looking at an antique piece made by Hazel Ellis. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's gorgeous. I see you smalls at 68. Thank you so much. I know everything at this estate sale, you know, you can really tell a lot about a person by their estate sale. I'm just saying yeah. everything is kept in 
very nice shape. Very nice shape. Um, Smalls coming to you for 68. Congrats. Yes, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. And like what Sarah said about that, the stay sale, um, the primitives that we found, there was a lot of antique stuff that you would think like farmhouse, um, colonial type of stuff, like really interesting things. Um, <clears throat> this next piece is antique. And I want to get in close just to show you this browning that is going on on the milk glass. I can't figure out how to get it off. It's like in the milk glass. So like, I mean, I think that's the pattern. I don't think it's supposed easy. to come well, and that's what I looked and looked. There's a pattern, but um, part of the pattern may have been worn off, possibly. I don't know. But it is a beautiful, maybe a slag, possibly. It is a milk glass, and you can see it has um, just just the standard white at the base. Yeah. And then this design all the way around, um, including underneath the holder. So it's a very unique piece. I could not find this online. The only ones that I could find online were the clear glass. Um, and these are made in Germany, early 1900s. And oh. I'll show you on the spinner here. Um, so it was made by, well, let's get it to go. There we go. Cosmos Brenner, which Brenner actually stands for, or is in German, is Burner. So it's a Cosmos Burner gotcha. is what the name of the brand was. And a little bit after 1900 is when they were bought out by another company and kept on making these pieces. Yeah. Um, so this is pre-1900. Yeah, um, so it is a form of slag. Okay, thank you. Because I, I was really going down a rabbit hole, and it is in the glass. So, um, and yeah, so you've got the tin is actually in excellent condition. Uh, no rust or anything. You've got the hanger intact. That's and amazing. the original hurricane is a hand-blown hurricane. You can see up here where there's like an imperfection. That's not a crack or anything. That's just how it was finished off. They, they were kind of rugged and and um, yeah. not all the way finished always, those hurricanes. No, and we just posted marshmallow. I agree. It's really yeah. cool. And we, did, we couldn't find anything. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So the only way that I was able to for sure tell, you know, if it was what it was is because of the making right here. And some of these pieces have been found and then turned into electric lamps back in the 20s. I know we talked about that once electric was um, used around in most homes, they took their lamps and turned them into electric ones. So this one has not been converted. It's still in its original condition. You take off the hurricane top. I see you bathtub, Mary. Thank you. And unscrew this right here. And that's where you would pour in the oil and put in your little wick and these were known <clears throat> excuse me these were known as the most popular in europe hey, holly. <clears throat> back in the early 1900s hey holly uh Doesn't no no glow glow and yeah no glow at all and you can't see through it it's a very thick milk slag glass yeah <clears throat> it's really and cool the measurements on this is right at 12 inches tall Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and count down. I'm excited to find it at home. And I did empty it out of any oil so it won't show up on fire or anything. So um, bathtub Mary's in at 30. Uh, we're going to start our countdown from 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Once again, made in Germany. Super cool piece. Hi, Susan Lynn. How you doing, girly? And then I think around oh, the 20s or 30s. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay, Bath and Mary. It's sometimes it serves you well. Yeah. Thank you, Susan <laughs> Lynn. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. There's our bid end. So, Susan Lynn, this is yours for 37. Thank you, Bath and Mary. Your 40 came in right after the bid end. Sorry. Congratulations. Thank you. Awesome. I Love need to it. Give a drop. Yes. Go ahead, babe. Beautiful piece. All right. So I have a fun combo. And I love a good 1950s kitchen, and we've got everything from antiques to mid-century tonight. So um, this is a Fire King batter bowl in opal, 
and these typically go for about 25 and I have given you three different mid-century cookbooks to go with it for your mid-century kitchen. So I'm starting the bid on all this entire combo at $26 and you're going to first get the Metropolitan Cookbook and look at all of the little anthropomorphic weirdos on here. Little fruit in a mid-century bowl. Look at those guys. Carrot and tomato, so happy together. A little steak with an atomic hairdo. I don't know. I love this kind of stuff. This was actually produced by the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company from New York. And I want to say the year on this is 55. Yeah, September of 55 right there. And these cutie pie illustrations go throughout the entire book. Um, there's everything from recipes for like just basic barbecue sauce, hollandaise sauce, white sauce, uncooked cranberry relish. And every heading has um, some little anthropomorphic friends in it. So I just love this. And I think it's super mid-century cute. So that's the first cookbook you're going to get. The second one is put out by Nabisco and it's called Plain and Fancy Desserts. So you can, <laughs> we've got like a jello tower with some Oreos around it. Kind of hokey, but you know what? Hey, Nabisco I need it. some ideas, right? <laughs> Hi, Laura, how you doing, honey? I know, an anthropomorphic <laughs> ham for the win, right? All right. So um, these are all different yummy dessert recipes, regal party pudding with Oreo cream sandwich cookies, heavenly souffle, raspberry bisque. Ooh, that sounds good. Minted fruit compote. Then we get to crepes and fruits and flambés. So this one is um, just a little bit of everything. Fancy desserts to like super basic desserts put out by Nabisco. 1950s cool. on this one too. And then the last one you're going to get is the Royal Cookbook. And it is really fun. Um, it was putting out, but put out by Royal Baking Powder. That is the brand that put out the cookbook. And this one is copyright 1930. So this one is about 25 years older. Cream of tartar, the precious ingredient, in case you didn't know. Um, recipes from afternoon tea cakes to bacon and liver, chicken pot pie, date muffins, and Easter bunny cake. Uh, griddle fritters, whatever the hell those are. Uh, hermits. What's a hermit? I feel like we should look that one up. Page. No, I think I know what a hermit is. Page 24. What in the world? But when it comes to food, what is a hermit? It's, All right, a, little we're frog. Back. it's a little frog. Shortcakes. Like hermit. Hermits. Kermit. It's next to meringues. It's shortening sugar, molasses, milk, flour, baking powder, soda salt, cinnamon, and raisins. Okay, that makes more sense. They end up being like cookies. So hermits apparently are cookies. All right, so all three of these really neat vintage cookbooks, plus you're going to get the beautiful Opal Fire King Batter Bowl. No issues on this whatsoever. You can see Fire King right there for the logo. And this piece alone goes for 25 to 30. So this is a great deal. You're going to get the little Fire King Batter Bowl plus these three vintage cookbooks for your kitchen. Super cute. I love a vintage kitchen. And look at that yummy. It's handle. so good. Yeah. It's a band from the 60s. Kermit is a frog. Kermit, <laughs> Kermit and the Kermits. Kermits. Hermits. Hermits <laughs> is the dessert. So 26 for the whole shebang. I see Kathy in. Let's do a quick countdown and we'll keep it moving. Here we go. Vicki, I see you two at 26, looking for 27. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Look at the bit end. You're going to get all three cookbooks plus this fantastic Opal Fire King Batter Bowl. These are handy too. This is really functional. Great for making pancakes. Anything you need to pour. Yeah, it's so handy. I love that. Cookbooks and the Fire King Batter Bowl. But All is right. Holly's in the lag, I think, maybe. I'm sorry, what? I think Holly's in the lag. She said something about glad you had sun. Holly, are you in the lag, honey? I don't know. 
I don't know. There's our bid in from Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Vicki Leach Payne coming to you for 27. Congrats. Congrats. That's awesome. Hey, thank you so much. You're okay, Lisa. No worries. It happened. All right. So mm -hmm. I have some more primitives, very antique -y, awesome stuff, very mantique -y as well. So first off, if anybody is needing a horse bit in your house, I've got three, okay? And for different types of uh, issues. So first off, um, and these are all like forged iron antique. Um, so first off, we have the unjointed. And these were used, you know, they're snaffle bits used for the horses. So they put go around and everything would get tied on. These are great for display. Yeah, great for a display in the bedroom, by your fireplace, depending on what you, you know, where you want to display. Um, but this is a 12 inch long one. You can see the metal's in great condition. Um, well, these were actually displayed at that house, just hanging next to the fireplace with some other thing. Yeah, a little itty bitty cuffs. <laughs> next up, <laughs> next up as choice, this is the single jointed one. So depending on the animal, you know, they would have a joint so it's easier to fit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, do what you want with them. Uh, okay, Pullman, calm down. <laughs> apocalypse time yeah if you need if technology fails you've got the pieces to you know go out and get yourself a horse seriously yes doomsday prepping at its you know antique primitive version why not right um and so those are the first two um and last but not least this one i believe was possibly a handmade one i don't know it is uh definitely different so you can see um, they're put, it's all put together, and it's they used a chain. Oh, my goodness. Different type of chain. So it's actually um, three joints. So you've got a joint here, one in the middle, and then one over on the edge. So it would kind of curl around a little bit more. I don't so, think that's very nice for the pony. I don't like no, that. No. So that's why we want to use them just to display um, in our homes, not on our horses. But you never know when you need them. Yeah. Same, Dusty. Uh, yes. And these primitives really are very valuable. Like if you look at these um, elsewhere to buy them, this is a good deal. 16. Oh, yeah, really good deal. Mm -hmm. 16 for choice. And, you know, they're great for, you know, cowboy type of decor, southwestern decor, but also just like an eclectic mess like what we have here in our office. And, oh, they all measure between 11 inches and 12 inches as far as size, if you're thinking of where to hang them. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. Right by the fireplace, they look great. Mm -hmm. um, so $16 for choice. I'm not <laughs> I'm not seeing any interest. Yeah. Karen Williams has those um, really fun animal traps. These would look really nice with that. There you go. <laughs> all yeah. Right, so Primitives are the new thing, apparently. I don't even yeah. know what that means, wordsmith, but yes. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. I will bring these back for the recap. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Those are so cool, honey. I think Thank they're you. neat. Yeah. Um. All right. So let me get back over here to my glass. All right. So I have a beautiful uranium glass sugar and creamer that go with the teacups that I sold earlier. And I am starting these at 48 for the pair. We're back to beavers. <laughs> you guys are killing me. So first up is this gorgeous creamer. Look at this. It's an octagon panel. And again, it's got the same like eight sides, the rounded bottom. It matches the teacups and saucers that I sold earlier. And good luck finding this one online. Um, again, looked at brands and the best match I can find is Cambridge glass. And then we also pulled up, there was Cambridge glass, there was high there was uh, Liberty. Victoria, there was Liberty. And then another one called like Pine Point or something, something I'd never even heard of. These are rare. I could not find this particular handle. You can find this same style, but you cannot find the same handle oh, and this umbrella style paneling around the side. So um, beautiful set. Again, very rare. They are antique based upon the home that they came from. Just gorgeous. This is the creamer. And so here's the sugar bowl. Look at it. It has two of the fantastic, really angular art deco style handles on it. Um, and it is just beautiful. Again, if we have to guess 
We're going to call it Cambridge glass, but um, the handles also cry Fostoria to me. Mm -hmm. So if someone knows this particular pattern in, in general, let me know. It's an octagonal panel. It has eight different sides and um, you'll see some that are kind of ruffled at the top, but they don't yeah. have this indent scooping almost like an umbrella. So yeah. this is for the pair. This is a good price on antique glass. They glow like crazy. It looks they like are a major award. It does. This one, look, yeah, it doesn't, it looks like a trophy of sorts. Yeah. Yeah, just stunning and a good price on these because you're not going to find these anywhere else online right now. I have the only ones that I could find. There are similar pieces, but the handles are not the same and the tops are not the same. And the bases are either hexagonal or octagonal. They're not round, which was so weird to me. So they are just absolutely beautiful. Asking 48 for the pair. And okay, Kelly, I see you I in. Know. Thank you so much. I know. And the glow on these is just spectacular, along with the teacups that match. So really nice pair. No chips, no cracks, no issues. The clarity is still nice. The glass is not scratched or sick. They're just great. So I am going to start a countdown, okay? Um, we are at 48 with Kelly Abbott. If anybody else is interested in these, Rare, hard to find antique depression glass pattern with an octagonal panel and Fostoria style handles. So who knows? We are just not sure. So many different brands in the 20s. Yeah. Right. right? I know. Tea with posh people, Sherry. I agree. Here we go. <laughs> We're at 48 looking for 49. This is for the pair. Um, 15, 14. Thank you, Jim. I think there are two. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Looking for a bid end. Okay, Karen. There's also European depression glass. That's interesting. Seriously, I could not. I couldn't find a brand on these, but we had it narrowed down to Cambridge or Fostoria. Mm -hmm. We think. <laughs> there's our bid end. Beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. All right, Kelly Abbott, they're going to match your cups. So good, honey. Those are gorgeous. Right. Thank you so much, Kelly. Whoops, oh, you're Wait. good. Not me. Not me. There you go. <laughs> Which way did I go? Oh, All God. right. Um, so I have more antiques. Um, I'm choicing them out at 28. So let's first start with this beauty. This is early 1900s. <clears throat> this is the Blue Swirl Granite Ware Coffee Pot, the enamel. And you can see it is in excellent condition for its age. If you find these online, this condition, you don't, you can't find it online right now. Um, you can find these for about 50 to 80 with a tons of rust and a lot of issues. This is in excellent condition. So I'm starting it at 28, which is a heck of a deal. Wow. Um, it has nice clean inside, even on the lid. And most of the paint is all still there. You can see just a little little missing spot right in here. I mean, just excellent condition. This is beautiful for farmhouse decor, for outdoor stuff. Even with your mid-century modern type of stuff, um, you can pop that up and put some flowers coming out. I think it would be beautiful. Um, but yeah, just kind of use it as a decor feature for sure. Um, yeah. So that's your first choice and it measures right at 10 inches tall. Okay, so that's your first choice. Second choice, I thought this kind of looked nice with it because it has kind of the same vibes. This is antique Northwood. Um, it's a bonbon um, dish and you can see you've got the two handles and the green is a little bit more on the rare side for the carnival. You can find the butterfly one in the um, uh, marigold. You cannot find, you can find the blue one as well. It's listed for, I think 120. The green, um, I couldn't find, but it is just a really nice carnival color. You've got the butterfly right in the middle and made by Northwood, and you've got the stamp down here on the bottom. So um, this guy measures right at seven and a half inches length, and I had this sitting up in just a little plate stand uh, holding it up. No, Dusty, it does not glow. Uh, the Northwood piece does not glow, um, but it does have that look. You would think it would glow for sure. Yeah, we tried it too because we thought it might also, and it doesn't, but man, it's right. pretty. Yeah, but I in the sun, it just... 
Yeah. Yeah, the butterfly just pops. Yeah. The oil right. is really, really, really good. Yeah. And that green is just very juicy. So um, I see Cassie in. And hey, Lucinda. So we have the beautiful um, granite ware or the Northwood antique, both antique, great for a garden room or um, just for your summer vibes. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to get in, you can. Thank you, Karen Williams. Uh, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. And I love the lip on this all the way around those little drips that go all the way. Yeah. Spectacular piece. And the color is just lovely. So good. I agree, Sherry. Oh, yeah. Sherry, that's such a good idea. It would be cute. Even with yeah. just like some baby's breath or something. Yeah, yeah, just pop it open and have some flowers popping out. Yep. All right, there's our bid end. Congrats, Kathy Plunkett. You are uncontested. So let me know if you want the coffee pot or if you want the glass dish. Glass glass dish. <laughs> the glass dish. Yeah. Glad this. <laughs> Love it. Congratulations, Kathy. Congratulations. Thank you. That's fantastic. All right, you guys. Oh, it's time for a giveaway. It is time for a giveaway. Let's do it. So David is giving away $5 in Coleman cash right now. Yeah. And it can be used tonight or it can be used up until April 24th. Um, you've got 30 days to use your Coleman cash. So, okay. Kathy said she's going to take both. You know what, Kathy? Good price on both. Good for you. I don't blame you. Thank you. Excellent. Like that you do. All right. So this is going to be for the first person that gets the question correct. It is from our 1980s trivia. And here is your question. No purchase necessary to win. You're playing for $5 Coleman cash. What sitcom starred Alan Thicke, Joanna Kearns, and a young Kirk Cameron? No, you cannot pay your taxes with Coleman Cash. That is correct, Sherry. That's correct. You can try, but they're going to be like, what? Huh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Patty Rose got it. Congrats, Patty. It is Growing Pains indeed. Such a good show. Yeah. I, I loved it. And do you guys remember... There was an actor and his character's name was Boner. Um, Boner, yes. I swear to God, Boner and what was Kirk Cameron's character's name? Mike. Mike Seaver and Boner were best friends. And then something really tragic like in real life happened to Boner. But legit, yeah. it's his homie. I remember that. Congratulations, <laughs> Patty Rose. Growing pains. Congrats. $5 Coleman Cash. I'm writing you down. Patty got $5. All right. So, is that me? Is it me? It is you. Yeah. Yes, you remember Boner. He was a sweet kid, not very bright. Yes, Boner. He's funny, funny yeah. little kid. Nice little fella. All right. So I have some penny doll couples that I'm gonna sell, and I'm selling them as couples because they came together as couples, and I thought they looked cute. So we're gonna start the couples at fifteen dollars for choice, <laughs> and. First up in our little couple madness, let me make sure I've got the right boy with the right girl. Here we go. Okay. So here's our first little couple. And she has on a little pink Dutch girl hat. Very, very cute. And these are all made in Japan. These are considered penny dolls. Um, they're very sweet. They are bisque with cold paint. They do not have a glaze. And here's the little Dutch boy that matches her. He is precious. Super duper cute. I love his little britches. He's got a little green hat on with some wear and a little red scarf. And he is also made in Japan where most penny dolls were made. So this little couple coming together is going to be 15 and you get them both. Second couple that is coming together are these little guys. And I believe they're Japanese based on the little guy's hair. And again, we're made in Japan. And um, I love the traditional hairstyle, very uh, reminiscent, again, of Shogun. You should be watching it on FX if you like that kind of Japanese history. It's fascinating, 15th century. Um, and then here's the little sweet girl that goes with him. She's got, I don't know if they're earmuffs or if those are little flowers. 
Um, looks like she's carrying a little guitar. So those little two are going to come together for 15. And then I have this little pair of cuties for 15. She's got a scarf on and I think she's got like a little bag or a pocketbook with her. Again, made in Japan, stamped right there. And then this little dude is her partner and he has on the little overalls. I like his purple hat too. I think so. Oh, is it Chinese? Okay. I wasn't for sure. I thought that was Japanese. So thank you for telling me. I did not know for sure. Um, and so this is the third choice and they're both coming together for 15. So um, really, really cute little boogers and they're coming as pairs. And again, that's how I found them. And I just thought they were so sweet. You got to keep them together. They've been together for so long. I know. We've been together forever. All right. So $15 for the pairs. This one. And the traditional Chinese. My apologies. I thought they were Japanese. So the traditional little Chinese babes. Very sweet. And then we have what I think is little Dutch girl. Yes, very good price. I normally sell these 10 to $12 each. So 15 for the pair is quite a good price. And they are super sweet. And penny dolls are fun to collect too because they come in so many different great colors. Agreed, yeah. And they look so good in the um, printer tray shelves. Yes, great if you are a miniature collector because these are only about two inches tall. So yeah. super sweet. And you have three different pairs to choose from look at these little guys these little guys they have all the paint still there all that color oh, yeah. all right well i will bring them back to another sale maybe individually and see if they sell better that way yeah tea parties and so on they are so cute yeah. 15 dollars for choice i don't see any interest and that is okay we'll bring them back and hopefully they find some homes soon yeah they need a little home. Thank you. All right. So I have a blue choice here. Um, so I'm going to start off with uh, the hanging piece. So we have three different things here. Nice blue tones, depending on what you like to de decorate with. We have a, um, a thrown pottery piece, and it is signed. I couldn't make out the signature. Maybe park. I don't know for sure. But nice thrown pottery wall pocket. You've got your nail hole right there, so easy to hang. And you can put, you know, I would put wildflowers type of things in there, but just to show you, you can put, you know, some sort of green, greenery in there. It just gives you a little pop of fun. Um, and it is handmade by a nice artist. You can see the the sheen going all the way down. Gorgeous. The blue, yeah. all the earth tones. And then you've got the raw pottery all the way through on the backside Ready. with those nice thick drips. Yeah, beautiful colors on those. So that's your first choice. The second choice I have here is another pottery piece or um, ceramic piece. These are made by Dansk and they're coming together. So we have two taper holders and they're meant to, uh, or they're from the Mesa pattern is what they're called. So you've got that really cool design giving you a nice Southwestern feel. Yes. Uh, so these are Danish made to give you that uh, southwestern design, very mod shape as well. Um, no damage at all to them. Very nice, clean condition. Just look really cool from the tops. Would look good on a wood table, in my opinion. Yeah. Agreed. Hi, Nancy. Um, hey, and so that's the second choice. Last but not least, we have a beautiful perfume bottle. And this is um, made by MMA. Museum of Modern Art. They did a lot of, they do a lot of reproduction pieces that you can buy in the shop. Um, this one is in excellent condition and it does have a beautiful glow. You can see a little bit of that green. If I turn my lights down, it has a really nice green glow. Yeah. And this pattern is, this is uh, the blue feather, the feather pool design, and it has that cobalt blue. So it is a beaut. Let me measure that for you. Um, let's see. Oh, four and three fourths inches. So just under five inches in height. And that is its original stopper. Um, that's the one it came with. It has the exact same glow as it does down here. And it does glow nice and green on the stopper itself. Um, yeah, thank you, Susan. Uh, if you check out my uh, Instagram or YouTube here, I have a little short and a reel of it glowing just to show it. Uh, Karen, I see you in at 20. So those are the choices here. I just 
thought it would be kind of cool to part them together or show them together and then part them out. So uh, we have the Dansk beautiful taper holders. And we'll set this this way so you can see. I love Dansk. Those would be perfect too with just some clear um, acrylic or lucite candles. Oh, totally agree. Totally last agree. Week. Yeah. Yeah. And then last but not least, you have the wall pocket for the last choice. So let's go ahead and count down. The um, pottery piece is 11 inches tall. The taper holders are five and a half inches and the perfume bottles just under five inches. I love that wall sconce too. God, it's so cool. Yeah. I love those colors all together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, museum reproductions are amazing pieces to have and very collectible for sure. Yeah. And they're actually, they retain their value too. Yeah. Yes, they do. All right, here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Seven, I see you, Beth. Six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. Karen, I see you're 25. So pretty. Yeah, I love it all together. And the depth of the glaze in that pottery piece is just mm -hmm. yummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has nice tones to it. And I like that it has a curve to the bottom. It's not perfect. Absolutely. All right, so Karen's at 25. Beth is at 26. And we're just waiting for, there's our bid end. So Beth, you get first choice. We'll go wall pocket, taper holders, or perfume bottle. Or you can do all three. And then Karen will be right behind her with 25. Hey, Jennifer. All right. So Beth, I got you for the perfume bottle. Let's set this guy up. Got you. Thank you so much. And then Karen. <laughs> And then Karen, let me know if you're interested in the wall pocket or the candlestick holders. Awesome. Yeah, really pretty. Has a curve like a bent carrot. <laughs> Indeed, dusty moose. Little yeah. little peronies. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So thank you, Beth. And yeah, just let me know, Karen. Thank you. No worries. Okay. I will bring these back for the recap. Cool. Thank you guys. All righty. So next up for me, I have some very pretty. I have so many different international um, pieces tonight. We've got English, we've got Japanese, Chinese, um, German. We've got all the, the fun international and European pretties this evening. So next up for me are these little placeholders. I'm starting these at $9 each. And I'm going to show them to you. There are two that are similar. And these would hold like a little place card. Um, they would also hold a piece of ephemera, which I think would be really nice. So here you go. Here's like ladies trivia card. Clearly that's not what you would want to put in them, but you get the gist of how they work, right? So yeah. the little piece of uh, paper or whatever you want to put in them is right there. And these are actually little uh, Vinca flowers, also known as a periwinkle flower. Um, I used to plant these when we lived in Missouri all the time. They have beautiful little centers. They love the sunlight, the real ones. And all of these are marked. They do not have any chips or cracks. All of them are marked Royal Adderley Floral Bone China Made in England. So um, I have two of the little pink ones. Those are your choices. This one has a little bit darker center than this one has. And all of the leaves and petals are great. No issues there. So those are your first two choices. And then your next two choices are pansies. And you have a little pink one with a purple center. There's where you put your piece of paper. And they're marked on the bottom as well. And then we have a purple one. And it has the leaves as the holder in the back. So these are just beautifully made. I know they do. Well, what was funny when I was um, doing an image search on them, real flowers actually came up instead of these. So I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, but yeah these are beautiful. Um, they are handmade. They kind of remind me of the Italian Capodimonte flowers, but these are actually English bone china. So really, really pretty. And again, um, I love these together to hold all kinds of little things. Hold on. Let me show you two. Like if you have 
any kind of ephemera or playing cards that you're wanting to display, um, they just sit in there very, very sweetly. Yeah. It's a great way to display small ephemera for sure. Oh yeah. Great way to display small ephemera. Cute to work into an Easter display, um, but leave these out all spring. They're just gorgeous. So I again have two of the pink vinca or what you would know is the periwinkle flower, two of those available. And then I have a pink pansy and a purple pansy. Yes. Great for shadow boxes. These are beautiful. Typically these go for 20 to 22 each. Yeah. Them, and that is each. So $9 each is actually a very good deal on them. You can also put them into your miniature displays because they are so stunning. They actually look real. Right. Yep. Yep. Perfect little place cards for a table setting. There are four available at $9 for choice and they are super duper sweet. No issues, no chips or cracks. Every single one of them is marked Royal Adderley Bone China Made in England on the bottom. Wow. Okay, Frippy, I see you in at nine. Thank you so much. Really good deal on these little place card holders. All right, and I'm going to start a countdown. Right. Anyone else wants to get in on these? I agree, Peter. I know. We used to shoot weddings all the time, and they always would have a place setting for David and I with some kind of cute little card holder, and I used to love it. So... I'm going to start a countdown. We are at nine, looking for 10 on the Bone China Royal Adderley little flowers. Here we go. 10, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Looking for the bid end. Those are amazing and in perfect condition. Yeah, they're really nice. Really, really cute. They are so pretty for display. Put them amongst your little tchotchkes, right? Yes, yes I agree. <clears throat> There's our bid end. Okay, Trippy, let me know which one or ones you would like. If you want the pink Vinca or if you want the pink Pansy, the Pansies. Okay, the Pansies are yours. Congrats. Wow. Thanks, Trippy. <clears throat> Okay, so that means there's two left for the recap. We're going to have a fun recap, so definitely stick around. And my next item I'm really excited about. Uh, didn't realize how valuable this was or even what it was until uh, we grabbed it. And this is from an estate sale that had some Japanese stuff and some very antique stuff. So this is antique. Um, and I'm just going to show you all the way around. It's made out of bronze and it's handmade with the single bar for the actual hinge itself. Each side has a design all the way around. And this is, I, you know, between 1860s to early 1900s. And this is handmade and it was, con it was called a stamp box. So um, sometimes you'll find these online and you'll see them called a snuff box or a pill box, which they were also used for eventually. But these were originally designed as stamp boxes to put your stamps in. That's now, um, I'm starting at 58, um, which is about, you know, a third of its value. If you look online anywhere, um, antique antique Japanese stamp boxes are highly collectible. A lot of them were just tossed out. Very collectible pieces of history. And each one will have a little bit of a different design. This one has like a nice stove design and you can see the plant growing there next to it. That's cool. And then all the way around, you've got just different floral patterns. And they almost look, yeah, they like they're applied onto it. That's cool. Yeah. Yes. It's a I I get it, Dusty, but yeah, this these don't come around very often. And we were able to grab it, luckily. Um, and uh I'm starting it at a very low price because I did a pretty good deal on getting it. So um no issues, no damage. You can see the hinge is still totally intact and no uh, dings or anything it's been definitely taken well care of mm -hmm. and one of the one of the many things that you should be looking for when you're out picking when you find something like that uh yes it is empty it is empty 
and it, it has not been polished. Boxes go for over a hundred dollars, which kind of blows my mind. So mm -hmm. if he doesn't find a home here, we are going to go ahead and put this guy on eBay. Yes, yes, he is highly, highly collectible, hundred to two hundred in value, um, late eighteen hundreds, and the stamp boxes. If you find them online, yeah, hundred to two hundred, and this is an excellent condition. <laughs> And what a beautiful design too. Hasn't been polished, so it can be cleaned up a little bit more, but I left that dust patina in there. And you could still use it for, you know, a stash box or a pill box even in your purse, but yeah. originally was a stamp box. That's very cool. Can I see the top up close, please? Can't make it out. Yes. It's like an urn with legs. And then in the foreground, it's like a bowl with fruit. Like a basket with fruit and ivy. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of like an outdoor type of theme. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, like a, a very floral type of piece. That'll get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's hard to zoom in on some of that. But um, the size is right at one and a half inch square so that gives you an idea on the size they're very little petite fellas and yeah the craftsmanship is amazing they're handmade small little fellas you can see how it's put all together and super collected work together you go down the rabbit hole looking at these there's all kinds of neat ones yeah uh, so they're they're kind of fun to collect and now we know how valuable these are. My gosh, we'll be on the lookout for these little guys. Right. We had no idea until we found this one. Yeah. Thank you, Patty Rose. I see your bid. And I get it, Susan, closing your eyes. I actually thought right. about Okay. It, but, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and count down. Thank you so much. And um, if anybody else wants to get in, you can. I'm excited like, for right. so, Yeah. 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, Charlie. Yes. Yeah. Well, like, right. The prices on these are wild. So that's why we were like, well, <laughs> you know, we'll always start it here lower than we'll, you'll find it anywhere else. So right. Thank right. You. Thank you. Exactly. We didn't know either, Heidi. It was completely news to us. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, when I found out about it or read about it, um, it was under a list, a listing that said 15 antique things pickers should know about. And this was one of them. And I didn't know. And we didn't so, know. And we learned. Congrats, Patty. This is beautiful too. piece. All yours. Thank you. Congrats, Patty. And Patty, if you want to use your Coleman cash, just let us know. I bet you do. Yes. Right. Yes, yeah. So I am going to do, let's go with some kitsch. Yeah, uh, true. I've got a little bit of cutie pie kitsch, and this is so much fun. I will tell you, this is the first one of these I've ever found or sold. And so I love um, some obscure kitsch. Pretty fun. Hold on. I'm getting our little basket back on our hand. So I'm starting the bid on this little booger at $26. Okay. I'm going to show you what she is. She is in her little house. She is what's called a people pal. I had never in my life seen these. And they apparently came in all different kinds. And this was the top of the house that goes over the front. And then there's a little plastic case, which I have for it too. And the plastic case is cracked. See right there? So you can put that over it right there, but it, it does have a little crack through it. However, this is how they're usually displayed, come to find out. These date to 1967, and People Pals were little um, like mesh stocking dolls, kind of like the little Herman Pecker doll elf guys. Yes, I said that word. And <laughs> everything in it is so cute. So there's a little plastic chest that comes here with little red riding hood and she's a people pal in our plastic chest is none other than the big bad wolf finger puppet. I'll huff <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll blow your house in. Wait, no, that's the wrong nursery rhyme. That was <laughs> the little pigs. But anyway, it it's, it's, an evil, it's an evil wolf from a nursery rhyme. 
All right. right. Then you are going to get little Miss Red Riding Hood herself. And she is in great shape. She has her original little cape and everything. And she's got, hold on, she's got this little hat and cape that sits on her head. So there's her little hat. Okay. She has a little ornament hanger that comes out of her head. And then she has her little goodie basket that she was taking to grandma's. She's got piercing blue eyes that looks like she could either um, bring you really good fortune or she might kill you in your sleep. One of the two. Oh, um, man. Her little arm is curled to hold her little basket. Okay. Then the best part of the people pals is there's grandma in bed. Here's the wolf on my finger. Rah, grandma. Rah, 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 rah. All right. And you've got the People Pals Little Red Riding Hood book. And it shows you all the other ones. So we've got Nina Nurse, Betty Ballerina, Brenda Bride, Mother Goose, Goldilocks, Sally Stewardess, which is adorable, and Rockabye Baby. Um, these dates, 1967. Yes, made by Whitman Lucinda. Good eye. And they would come in these little cases. This is the back side. So the backside also has a crack in the plastic um, and you've got the mean wolf coming to grandma's about to cause trouble. And then you've got grandma in the bed. You've got this little treasure chest that holds Mr. Wolf. So we'll put that over there. Oh, and then, hello, grandma, what big eyes you have. And then grandma's like, the better to see you with, honey. And then... Um, we have our entire story illustrated with the people pals in the book. Okay. So awesome. super duper stinking cute to Ooh, find wow. all of it together is rare. Normally you'll find the doll without the book or you'll find the book without the doll Makes or sense. you'll find, you know, just the doll in the case, but none of the little critters. So we have grandma, we have the wolf, we have a little red riding hood. And Little Red Riding Hood also has a tag on her that I thought was kind of cute. And it goes on her little cape right there. Little Red Riding Hood. And of course, she herself is made in Japan. But this dates to 1967, made for Whitman, who was a publisher of lots of kids' books at the time. So just absolutely darling. This is the little string that holds on her little hat and cape. And she goes in there and there's Mr. Wolfie. And this is how it all looks. So very, very cute. Fun to find it all together. So cute. If you're a kitsch or a toy collector, I'll tell you, you do not find people pals. And I've been selling kitchen vintage for over 10 years now. And I have never in my life found a people pal. This is my very first one. So I think they're like this. And then this is the little layover. This is the original um, packaging that came with her. And then we have the outside of the little house that packages it all together. So just $26 wow. for the People Pals. Um, good price on these. They are collectible. And again, kind of hard to find without all of, you know, with all of their stuff. So super cute bathtub. I see you in at 26. Thank you so much. If anybody else wants to get in on this, we're looking for 27 or more. Again, here is the backside with the little wolfie. We've got the book. We've got the wolf. We've got the little um, chest. And the wolf actually goes in the chest because then he pops out in the story and you use him as a finger puppet. So, That's so fun. I'm, I know. It is super fun. People Pals. And it's spelled P-E-E. Why? It could just have been people. Just Not people. Yeah. Yeah, Red killed all the other people, pals. Um, yeah. So, so cute. I'm going to put her back in her little house, and we are going to get her to her destination. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. I know the wolf is funny. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Looking for a bid and better to eat you with no wait wrong nice is that the right <laughs> one again um he still wants what yeah what big eyes you have better yeah i got i haven't told i, I haven't tried right. media story in a really long time so I know. Finger 
1967. So cute. Yes. Bathtub Mary coming to you. Thank you so much. I love it. It's one of my favorite things I've found in a while. Congrats. So, thank you, Mary. Okay. Let's go ahead and do some more woodland creatures. Well, these aren't woodland creatures. They're made out of wood, but they're just creatures. So um, I'm starting these off at 26. These are the little bit more collectible ones. And I'm still starting them at a really low price. Um, so these were made in the 60s uh, by Senshukai. Um, they're called Royal Pets. And they were um, uh, only available through mail order monthly. And that was just one pet a month that they were available. Um, so we'll start off with the elephant. Um, he has the, fo the um, suede ears. That is real suede. So you have the suede ears. You have the suede tail and then the awesome little be beady eyes so Susan, i see you in um at 26 thank you these are all marked so you've got uh sen shikai on the bottom and then on the side you'll see it's stamped elephant uh, right there elephant. So one side will have the stamp the other side won't um and his little head will turn oh he's so mcm yeah, these turn wood pieces to have them with moving pieces, especially after this many years. I mean, 1960, none of them are broken. Little small pieces of wood dowels that keep them all jointed. So that's your first one, the elephant. This one's a twofer, really, because you've got kangaroo and you got little Joey. Um, so you've got kangaroo up, up front and then the stamp on the bottom. You've got the swiveling head again this guy sits still don't try to swivel him <laughs> but uh, Joey's just tucked into the gut there and hanging out with mama so that oh, one is really cool that's the tallest one he's uh, five inches tall i see you less thank you and then next up we have a rhino i love this rhino he almost reminds me of norwal off of um off of elf thank you He's yeah. just got that smile. It's just like, hey, buddy. buddy. Um, but so we've got the rhino. He's stamped on his bottom. He's got the uh, wood horn there. And then each wooden piece is all applied. They're all turned wood, and they're made out of Japanese cedar. So not teak, um, not um, ironwood. It's its own type of wood, Japanese cedar. So it's going to look really interesting with your mm -hmm. other animals if you do have them. Um, yep. Last but not least, uh, one of my favorites. Find your dad, buddy. Find your dad. <laughs> yeah, so we've got the hippo with the spring-loaded mouth. So there's oh. this little spring down in there that keeps him moving. That is so cool. He still has his sticker up here, which you can always take off if you want. And then the wooden little round feet. And then the wood round nostrils. And he's happy. He's got both of his teeth in there. So those are the choices. They're all about four inches long to three and a half inches tall. And then the kangaroo is the five inch tall. So just to give you an idea, kind of have some zooland creatures. Yeah. Should be free, but they're sometimes in the zoo. And I just to show you, this guy props up with his little tail. I think that's oh, cool. that's so good. I'm telling you, the the design in these is so good. And yeah, yeah this is a really cool new collection. Um, mid century little critters don't get any cuter than that. I know, I love them. I know. Bring back the wooden critter of the month club for sure. So these are all going to be for choice. These are the last ones we have for now. And Anne, I see you in at 28, and I see Patty in at 33. And these four are the little bit higher dollar ones because of extra joints and extra parts. Um, so they're a little bit more collectible. And the little elephant's ears are real leather. Yes, those are real real leather, like a suede type of texture. Um, here we go, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. It end. We'll turn him sideways. And they all have different like airline stickers. So was that like the thing? If you traveled, you could collect these or what? I wouldn't. Well, the only I found that they were only done uh, mail order. So maybe eventually they may have put them in the airport ports for um, souvenirs. 
One because one was a TWA, another one was like another airline, and they were all mid-century airlines that aren't around anymore. So I thought it was interesting. That okay, is. Patty, congrats. All right, Patty, congrats. Let me know if you want rhino, if you want elephant, if you want hippo, or if you want kanga. Hippo. Uh, congrats, right. what a cute. Congrats, name. Patty. Got you for that one. And then we've got the kangaroo. And at elephant. 35 was less. Okay, so less let me know. You can always put pass. And then after less is going to be Susan Arvuvu okay. and Ann Dumpkin. Okay, great. I think that's everybody. So that's Susan and Anne. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so cute, right? They're all just precious. I like the rhino. Yeah. Same. It's got that mm -hmm. smile. Yeah. All right. Take all. Let's okay. Take Les, I got you for all three. Congrats. Congrats. So cute. Thank you guys. Good. I love them. Thank you guys for all the bids. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I have some brooch choice and these are all different um really fun really collectible and really pretty um the these are going to be twelve dollars for choice okay. and some are kind of kitschy too so this first one i was like oh my gosh that has to be the kellogg's tony the tiger but guess what it's not it's actually the so -E -S -S -O tiger uh for exxon gasoline he was the mascot and the whole terminology behind the tiger being the mascot was put a tiger in your tank. So he is a gasoline mascot and he is really cool. He is a collector's item and he goes for like 30 to 35. But you know me, I never bring brooches that high unless it's something no. crazy. So um, really cute. The SO put a tank, put a tiger in your tank. SO Exxon gasoline tiger mascot is first choice. Second choice is a really cool little pin and it is Barbie. Um, and you've got a little Barbie head. You have a Barbie shoe and Barbie glasses that are hanging from the little Barbie coat hanger. Super duper cute. And it has a nice long pin on the back side. And the little shoe has something written on it. And I want to say it's a year, but I can't make it so tiny. I can't I don't know. Let's try. Whatever that says, right? That's it, what it says. Yeah, I know. I was like, I don't know what that says. But so, darling, I love that it's just a little Barbie pin. And I love those glasses, too. You know, I'm here yeah. for that. So cute. All right. Next up, then, I have this really pretty butterfly pin. And it has enamel and gold around the wings. And then in the center... Um, that is like a fire opal, dragon's breath kind of cabochon. Really pretty stone in the middle. Lovely shape. This is like two and a half inches. Really darling little brooch. No actual brand or anything or marking on the back. But I was just completely um, in love with that pretty pinky purple stone in the middle. I just think that's yeah. beautiful. So that's going to be choice number three. And then choice number four is just a little fun guy from the 50s. And it is a little rhinestone poodle with a red eye. All the little rhinestones are there. And this little guy is about two inches as well. Super sweet. And it's kind of like a silver pave style um, with the rhinestones. And his little pin on the back looks like that. Okay. So these are all adorable. First choice again is the Esso Exxon um, Gasoline Tiger. He is the little mascot. Really sweet. I'm guessing probably 50s or 60s on that guy. Yeah. And then we had the Barbie dangle brooch with the little, um, the little charms and the coat hanger, the Barbie coat hanger. Super sweet. We've got the fire opal little butterfly, really pretty with the enamel, pinks and purples, nice for spring. And then this cute little poodle. Okay. So I only see one bit of Mary. If anybody else wants to get in on these, we're looking for 13 or more. And that is for your choice of brooch. All right. So let's go ahead and start a countdown. Mary's in at 12. Here we go. 15, 14. 
13. I think so too. Probably so. eight, Mary, on this guy. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. Cute, cute. <laughs> That's a muscular line or a tiger. I know. He could really be Tony if you wanted him to be. Tony. Tony. Oh, Tony. Yeah. Super cute. All right. There's my bid in. Mary Causey, it's all you, girly. Let me know which one or ones you would like. And thank you so much for your bid. Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, while we wait to see what Mary picks, um, Tiger and Butterfly. You got it, Mary. Thanks so much. Cool. All right, so my next find is a beautiful toy. It is made out of wood and like um, hand painted and some string, but that's it. Um, this is made in USSR. So this is from the 60s. These were very um, kitschy, touristy types of pieces, um, but made in, sorry, I got it upside down. Made in USSR is stamped on the bottom. I could not find this guy. The closest one I could find was online for over $100. I thought that was ridiculous. Um, and he was a little bit different. Now, this one is called the um, the trapeze man or trapeze artist. And you wind him up and then you get him to flip over. So the way uh, you do it is you flip him backwards like this. About four, five times. So two, three, four. Uh, we'll stay with four, actually. That looks pretty good. And then down here is where you apply the tension. And it's right on just a, a regular old nail, and it slides, and that's where you're going to make him start flipping. So it's let's. So primitive. It is very primitive, but it works. So I'm going to start off here. Uh, it's USSR, yeah, Soviet Union. Yes. Get it? Get it? He's a flipping. He's doing He's it. There he goes. Cute. Get it, buddy. You can do it. Oh, he's a little gymnast. Oh, yes, he's a gymnast. He does. He works great. Um, there we go. Let's do it again. Do it again, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not doing a very good job. You're supposed to. It's, it's all about timing. There you there go. go. And if you get him going at a certain speed, yeah, he'll flip himself multiple times. Yes. Oh, um, um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Sherry. <laughs> Wind him up and have some fun with him. And he, he kind of looks like he's breaking into a house. He's got that red face. Kinda. And he's, um, he, the the mechanics are wooden, but he's yes. on like a little string. And his body is kind of like a plastic, sort of painted plastic. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't tell if it's a painted wood or a plastic. Yeah, I it's think you're plastic. right. Yeah. yeah. But so, yeah, you can see his face and so then his cool. shoes. Look at his little shoes. I like his little elfie shoes. Those are fun. <laughs> but yeah, and so you just, it, it works best if you have him stand, sitting on something rather yeah. than trying to hold them. Uh, but yeah, it's a great piece if you like to collect um, vintage toys, even like folk art type of stuff. It's USSR from the 60s and not a lot of them here in the States, just so you know. Yes. Um, but yeah, he's a really cool dude. He measures right at 10 inches tall and just excellent for your toy display. I'll put this behind he's it. Super cool. He came actually out of the estate sale that we got all of the antiques and the green glass. He was at that same estate sale. So really cool little guy. And um, yeah, the only other ones we found online are go for over $100. And we were like, right. that's kind of crazy. So one more flip, buddy. There he goes. All right. And yes. All right. So I will bring this back for the recap. Oh, so cool. David, I love this. Thank you. Love him. So fun. Yeah, you can play with him. And the more you wind him up, the more he'll flip. But yep. be careful because he is clearly, you know, 80 Older. years at this yeah. point. <laughs> but nobody got him anyway. So I'm telling that to myself. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, so let's go this way. I have another pretty piece of glowing glass, and this one is coming by itself. 
And okay. this is also Hazel Atlas. I'm starting this at 22. And um, it is the modern tone candy dish. Now, you um, what I what I read is it's for nuts or candy or a relish dish. But it's so small, I would probably use it for like nuts and M&Ms and stuff because then you could divide it up and, you know, have it sitting out. And then you could tell everybody, you know, they're eating radioactive snacks. So really cool piece for your display. I love that big funky sunburst too. Isn't that pretty with all the rays and everything? It goes to the little points at the ends. Um, just such a lovely piece with a wonderful glow. Um, definitely is depression glass being Hazel Atlas. And uh, the, like I said, the style is called modern tone, um, but it's, it's definitely an old piece. So yeah. glows like crazy. If you put it like this, it looks like the Mercedes symbol. Uh, <laughs> and uh yes you're right good idea bug flip it over use it as a little glowing riser if you feel so inclined as well in your black light display oh heck yeah yeah really great little piece um it measures in size right at five inches so five inches in diameter great for a relish tray too i don't know if you would actually want to put food in it but Right. I think it would also double too, you know, if uh, as like a trinket dish or an ashtray or just a little catch all, you could put your keys in it, <clears throat> change by the door, that kind of thing. Any glowy brooches. Or that's or brooches. That's a good idea too. I love that, Patty. Um, she said mm -hmm. grandmother served olives in it on holiday tables. So yeah, truly a, what would be considered a relish dish. Yeah. Great price at 22 for antique hazel atlas from the 20s. And that's cool, Victoria. Okay. That's good to know. It is really exciting um, to find these pieces because clearly they're not made anymore. Nobody puts uranium um, or cadmium in glass anymore. So really a gorgeous um, find. It does not have any chips or cracks or any issues. $22 on my little glowing glass relish dish slash nut tray slash candy bowl. It's a heck of a deal. It is. It's really good. It's really pretty. And uh, I love the glow on this. It's just really, yeah. you can see all these pieces have a really intense glow. Bug yeah. is in at 22. Thank you so much, Bug. I'm going to do a countdown on this little piece. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heirloom pieces. Yes, agreed. Great to pass down as well. Um, also makes a nice gift. People, um, younger people are getting into all the glowing glass, especially since they've watched Oppenheimer. <laughs> so you know, it's it's true. It's a whole trend. Um, so the glowing glass is really a whole thing right now. There's my bid in bug mediocre arts and crafts. This is coming to you. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you so much for your bid. On. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Great. Fine, babe. And okay. So it has started snowing just a little bit. So skippers yeah. outside, I've got the door open. Oh, <laughs> so gosh. Starting to get chilly already, but hopefully it'll come in soon. So I have some dollhouse furniture. Not really um, my thing. However, I always thought this little furniture stuff was pretty cool. It These cool. pieces are chunky, awesome wood, and I'm doing sets. So I have two different sets. First off, I have a table and four chairs. I'll show you the top. It is a nice thick wood, and each uh, leg is stuck in with a little dowel from the leg. Um, it does look like they have been reinforced with some glue. This one right here... Um, is not reinforced with glue, but it's still pegged in. So I wouldn't really mess with it unless it falls off. Um, really nice condition otherwise. And then the four chairs all are done like this. And they also have the joints that are put together with the little studs. Those are old. Yeah, yeah, that's very really old. Cool. yeah, really neat, like almost Italian look to, to the furniture. Wow. On that, that. So I'll show how it sets up together. And what's cool is uh, this set, comes with a little radio. So um, put them all together like that. So this set comes for $18 and it comes with this little itty bitty table radio. Oh my God. That's so cool. Look at the little radio. Or it might be a cigarette machine. I don't know. 
probably a radio. And so he f sits up on the table, looks pretty cool right there. Um, or you can just have him, if you have other Dowell House uh, furniture, he'll go really nice with that. So that's the first set. That chair is blocking it. There that's so cool. Oh, there he went. And it's not a it's not a pencil sharpener. That's just dollhouse furniture. <laughs> it's so just that's the first one. <laughs> that is a little bit different. This one is made out of bamboo. Um, and it's gonna come with two chairs that are like outdoor chairs. Cute. And you see you've got the raffia and then the bamboo all held together. Uh, I can't find a nail. I don't know how they made these. Uh, you know, they just fit the pieces in like puzzles. Yeah, it's you crazy. Know, there are no it's nails. It's same just detail. Yeah. These chairs are actually very, very collectible because of the bamboo. Um, so these two are coming together, but they're also coming with a little hardwood fire pit. So it's a little fire pit, like ashtray type of looking fella. That's but cute. I use them as an incense burner too and set him right in front of those chairs so that is the second set and i'll show them together this radio they're seeing tabletop jukebox okay we didn't know for sure uh, okay tabletop jukebox that makes sense once i was looking at it it looked different yeah. yes. penny dolls would go great with these i agree yeah oh totally Gilligan so, Island vibes. yes totally okay so bridget i see you in at 18. i just think these are epic if you are into like making a whole diorama type of display you can definitely put some kitschy dolls in there um even chernobyl charlie looks pretty cool the little penny dolls that i had earlier would be perfect scale wise yeah they would they really would all right so let's go ahead and count them down um this is for choice of the outdoor set or the indoor set with what we think is a tabletop jukebox slash radio. But right. you know, now that I look at it, it does. It looks like an old school little jukebox that would be at your table at a restaurant. Yeah, yeah totally. All right, let's count them down. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It is. Aw, Victoria said someone's daddy made those for his little girl a long, long time ago. Oh, uh, yeah. They have made dollhouse furniture like that in forever. That's so I agree. Cool. They are very old and handcrafted and just super sweet. Yeah. I think the fire pit was precious. Yeah. Same. All right. So, Bridget, let me know if you want the table and chairs or if you want just the chairs um, with this and little, the fire pit. little fire pit. Cute. Or you can do both. So just let me know, and I'm going to put these down so I don't drop anything. Okay, got you for the table and chairs with the little uh, radio. Thank you so much, Bridget. Awesome. Okay, I'm getting down to my nitty gritty. Let's go this way. I've got some fun stuff. Where did they go? What did I do? Oh, I put them up here. Okay. So this is going to be for choice. There's two choices. And I am starting these at $14 for choice. And the first one up is Vintage Disney from 1978. It is a pictorial souvenir of everybody's favorite ride and earworm. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's a small small world now if you've never been to disney world or disneyland there is a ride called it's a small world and it plays this song over and over and over and over and you just go in and float around on the ride to cool off in the air conditioning because it's air conditioned in there and the little animatronic dollies sing this song about four thousand times so here you can see it you go through you get in these little boats and it takes you into your little small world palace. And this pictorial souvenir is actually really cool. It has the contents, um, the happiest cruise that ever sailed, Europe, the old world, on to the Orient, safari to Africa, a South American fiesta, the lure of the South Pacific, the grand finale. It all started at the World's Fair behind the scenes in a song for children. So um, it says that its opening day was at Disneyland in 1955. And again, everybody's favorite ride or not. You either love it or hate it, okay? Yeah, there's but, no indifference. <laughs> yeah, it talks about all the little animatronics. 
and she recognized the sounds of Scottish bag bagpipes or the German glockenspiel band, <laughs> high sipping a French can can or driving Spanish flamenco. So um, it just talks about basically the entire ride. And this was the pictorial souvenir from 1978. This is on eBay for anywhere from 40 to 70 bucks. I'm offering it for 14. Again, I got a really good deal on this. I thought it was cool. It is from 1978 and the pictures are pretty great. So the entire thing also has these drawings from um, front to back. So great little groovy illustrations of the ride. And it is an official, official Disney souvenir. So that's going to be choice number one. And then choice number two is quite a bit older. This is from 1949 and it's called Counting Rhymes. And the illustrations are done by um, an artist named Florence Sarah Winship. And she was famous for a lot of her illustrations of animals, but she also has like these alluring little <laughs> psycho looking twins, two little brothers looking just like one's name's Bill, one's name's Mike. And they have two little doggies. Look at the cats. And again, that's why Florence Sarah Winship was so popular. Her anthropomorphic animals are just precious. So you've got three little kittens wear their mittens where they go out to play. Three little kittens wear their mittens every single day. So four frisky puppy dogs playing in the sun. Two like to roll, two like to run. Sounds like mine. Yeah. Honeybees are buzzing around the garden hive. Sally Ann can count them. One, two, three, or five. Look at the chipmunks. It's cheery little chipmunks doing funny tricks. One by one, you count them. That's right. Just six. So this it clearly is a counting book. But um, once upon a time, I actually had this page framed mm -hmm. because of I the blurbs. Remember, we had this framed yeah. a long time ago. Um, and I think, you know, if you like the illustrations, that's certainly what you could do with it as well. Pages 9 and 10 are also lovely. You've got butterflies and froggies on a log. Cool. Um, and then on the back, you have the kids holding up the numbers. So again, this is a linen style. I don't know if you can see the paper, but it's like a linen style oh, texture yeah. to the book. Yeah, it's from 1949. And I think that the illustrations are really cool, really good. Yes, I agree. Cute one for Small World as well. Love those kitties with the mittens and the puppies and so on. So $14 for this is very reasonable. Usually it's around 18 and up. And this is very reasonable for this because this is like 30 and up. Disney, so yeah. This for choice, it's the 1978 Small World pictorial guide or the counting rhymes by miss florence sarah winship look at the little squirrels totally oh, great man, so many great. Little, little detail pieces yes yeah cute cute okie dokie well i don't see any interest so thank you guys and we'll throw it back to david right. Thanks. okay so i've got a radio um, and everybody needs one of these in their house, at least back in the sixties, everybody said in seventies, we need a transistor radio. You never know when everything's going to go off the grid. Uh, we've got uh, a good working radio and everybody does need to have one. So let's, let's get it on a station first. It does work. I just have to pick up a station, of course. course you're gonna do this it was playing well we've got snow cover right now so it may not be picking up <laughs> so that's how it goes on a live sale it does pick up um a signal if there's no major clouds um but it does work i'll turn this off because that is annoying um but so it's general electric from uh the mid 60s and the dial is in great condition am radio and it's nice and solid so no issues with shipping um like a lot of these have in the past um you've got someone's social security number etched in there yeah mars to david hello um <laughs> well, yeah it's trying to pick it up but it's just not going to be able to with all those clouds um but it's a nice piece to decorate with as well um and it, once again it does work you just need to get the signal 
And um, it has like um, a dark brown tone all the way around. So I'll show you that dark brown, no major scratching. And then even on the front where the speaker is, um, it's nice and clean, no major dust or anything like that. Um, it does work, like I said, um, I promise. <laughs> and you, well, you can hear it. You just have to pick up a signal. And um, yeah, it's a nice size too. It only measures right about nine inches long. So it'll fit in a display fairly easy. When is that eclipse? Um, I think it's like the next several days, right? Yeah, I think it's coming this week. All right. Well, I am not seeing any interest, so I will bring it back for the recap. Once again, $20. Oh, April 8th. Okay. $20 um, by GE and excellent condition, working condition. That's Thank such you. a cool piece. All right. It's a cool little clock. Great. So I have Ooh, one more item, and then we are going to go into our big old recap. All yep. right. So here we go. We have choice of trivet for $12 each. And first one up in this choice, and these are awesome to hang, but really nice functional vintage because you can use them too. So the first one is a veggie uh, motif. I couldn't think of the word. My brain's gone. This one is a veggie motif. So you've got an onion and a mushroom, some carrots, looks like some garlic cloves, and uh, maybe some little shishito peppers or something. I don't know what those are, but they're really cool. Um, and this is on a cast iron piece. So it will hang, but of course it's got little feet too. And we have our original Made in Japan sticker. And the little feet are in good shape. So it sits steady, nice for a spoon rest either way. Um, really cute little piece. Great for your mushroom kitchen. And that's going to be choice number one. I have choice number two, which is these groovy little funky partridge birds in orange and brown. You got some little accents of green there. And then the top looks like um, an eagle with a crest, which I think is pretty cool. So this one is about the same size. You can hang it right here. Um, and then it also has the little feet on the back as well, which make it sit up nice. So again, great for a spoon rest. Um, but really cool to decorate your retro kitchen as well. So that's choice two. All the colors. Yeah, I really like the colors. Choice number three. <laughs> Lemon limes. I know Lemmy is into this one. And oh, it yeah. is a little teapot uh, design in cast iron. And then it has the ceramic trivet in the middle. So yeah. you put a hot dish on it or, again, use it as a spoon rest. These are really nice between like the stove and the countertop, or they're handy to hang on the wall and then you can pull it down as you want to use it. But I consider these functional vintage because they wash up really cute. Um, you can decorate with them, but you also can use them. So yeah. I love uh, the pattern on that, the groovy olive green with the yellows and the orange for the lemon and lime. So I see Phil is in at 12. These are your choices. You have three, two, choose from. I love these old trivets. Very handy. And um, Beth is in at 13. If anybody else wants to get in on these, really great patterns. All right. So I'm going to start a countdown. Handy for your vintage kitchen. Use them. Don't worry about not using these. They wash up just great. Just don't throw them in the dishwasher. Okay. So here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Looking for a bid end. Thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight on your Sunday night, March 24th, otherwise known as Breakfast Club Day. This it was right. the day that they signed the letter from the Breakfast Club. It was March 24th, 1984. Wow. So you can do <laughs> on how old we all are. That was 40 uh, years ago. So, I know, right? Ooh, Chris, yeah. Okay, Beth, let me know. We'll call this one mushroom. We'll call this one pint, And we'll call this one bird. Perfect. Like bird mushroom. And then Phil will be after her. Yeah, 40, 40 years, Brad. 40 years. Yep. Who feels old now? <laughs> me. <laughs> That was one of my favorite movies, though. I don't know about you guys, but I loved that movie yeah. as a kid. You were 12 going on 13. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so Beth, let me know. Okay, Beth's taking lemons. You've got it, love. And then Phil, did you want the birds or the mushroom? Let me know. Archers, birds to Karen. To Karen V. I think she means Karen Chase because <clears throat> of the orange. To Karen C. I bet it is. Oops. Let me go for sure. Yep. And okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're fine, Phil. That's what I thought. <laughs> I to make sure in case we had another Karen, a Karen V. So yeah. 13 for Beth on the lemon lime. And Phil for the birds <clears throat> to Karen Chase. Yep. Okay, awesome. So we have a recap to go into. I'm going to scroll it back over to David. And during the recap, guys, if you could please just write the name of what you want and the price, it helps us keep track and go. Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. All right. So I'm going to fill up a board here slowly. Okay. So, like Sarah said, if you see an item, Make sure you put the name of the item and the price in, so we make sure that we're uh, we know what you're asking for. So first off, 1960s Royal Pets uh, by Senshu Kai. Senshu Kai. Um, they're stamped on the bottom. We have the uh, Condor available, and that is going to be for twenty five dollars. So uh, all made out of uh, Japanese cedar. Very collectible. Um, and mid-century beauty, beauty from Japan. So jointed pieces and all. So Condor for 25, and we also have the Pelican for 25. So there's Cute. the Pelican. He also has the pivoting head. So pivot. just 25 uh, Pelican or a Condor pivot, pivot. Okay, right. and then next up we have these little Scotties. So this one is like a rubber plastic. Little Scotty, these are all going to be uh, $4 for choice. So we've got the ceramic Scotty, the um, rubber Scotty, and then a wood type of uh, Scotty. And those are all $4 each, less I see you for the Condor. Um, so if you want one of the Scotties, just go ceramic Scotty, rubber Scotty, or wood Scotty, and then four. And let me write uh, less yes, down. Less is in on the Condor. Les, I got you for the condor. Trippy is going to take wood and rubber Scotty. Okay, so Trippy, I got you for the two little Scotties. Those are right. so adorable. Um, let me write those down and real quick. Pelican wooden animal is still available. Yes, Pelican is available. Last one available. And then Suzanne, I see you for the, the black ceramic Scotty. Right. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you so much. Let me write those down real quick so I don't... And Suzanne, I don't think we've worked together before. So if you would email us at ttbsarahc at gmail.com, we need your username here on YouTube, your real name um, in real life, your shipping address, and then the best email address to send you a PayPal link to pay your invoice. All right. And it can be your PayPal email or it can be just your regular email address. If you don't have PayPal, no worries. Yes. Super cute. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. And I'm writing that down. So I make sure I and have got it. trippy for the others. And you got less for the condor. Yes. And then we also have for 16, $16. I had the Colgate and co antique uh, shaving stick tin. It is empty. So it's just the tin. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, $16, really good um, advertising piece. And if it doesn't sell, sell, I'll probably put it in my shaving, um, to, uh, display in my bathroom. So would this typically hold like a shaving kit then? Is that what that was? A shaving. I, I don't know if it was like actually everything or I think it's the stick, like a stick that you would use to um, lather up your face. I don't know for sure. Huh. Cause it's Colgate, I always think of toothpaste. And I'm right. Like, right. Yeah. Right. So that is uh 16. Just put in 10, 16. And I also, 16, does it stand on its own? Yes. Yes, it does. It's got a nice flat bottom. Yep. Holds a sh Okay. Patty Rose said shaving brush. That makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. So yeah, you put your shaving brush in so that the bristles wouldn't get all messed up. And it does still uh, twist down. 
So, um, and then for 18, I have these, the set of dollhouse furniture made out of bamboo and it comes with a wooden fire pit. So Beautiful. all together for 18, just put in chair, uh, a doll furniture, 18. And then I have this guy made in USSR. Wow. USSR, really cool wood toy. And um, he works great. We flip him one time, just asking $28 for him. 28. You just pinch him until he comes on around. So let's go. Two, three. Woo! I Hello. love how he does like he goes a couple times. That's yeah. Great. So $28 just put in 28 toy, trapeze toy, whatever. And then also for 20, I have the Mesa design on the dance taper holders. Those are gorgeous. Beautiful condition. They really are beautiful pieces. Definitely nice for an outdoor type of, or a patio display. Um, so those are $20. Just put in taper holders, 20. And then for 20, I also have this thrown pottery wall pocket. Beautiful. With some nice earth tones and it is signed, I believe park possibly. Yeah. Um, so $20 on that. And that's about 11 inches tall. I love that thing. And then I also, I do too. And then I also have this um, jar can yeah. this peak um, puller slash open, you know, to grab them out of the water. Um, so this guy was 16, just put 16 can Canning. opener, holder, whatever. Um, Mary, I see you for the wall pocket. Got you for that. Uh, bugs, it was 20. The trapeze toy. 28. 28 for the trapeze toy. Just put in toy 28. Mary, I got you for the wall pocket. And okay. last but not least, we've got, oh no, I've got one more thing after this. So we've got the GE AM radio. It does work, needs to have a decent reception. Um, so this is $20, just put in radio 20. And then I have three choices of um, bit, bit callers for horses. These are antique. We have the single, the double, and then the triple. Um, and these were all going to be 16, I think. 16, yes, thank you. So 16 for the horse bits. And those are a great price on those. And if you want one of these, um, just put in bit 16 and then one, two, or three as far as the joints. Okay. Bugs, I see you for the toy trapeze guy. Thank you. Um, and that was it for me now. Okay. All yeah, right. Yeah, kind of like wind chimes if you hang them. Totally. Yes. Somebody needs those horse bits, I'm telling you. I agree. All right. Okay. So. so here is my recap. All right. So I had this Barbie brooch for 12. It's a little um, coat hanger. And she's got Barbie's silhouette, her shoe, and her cutie pie glasses. <coughs> so you can put in Barbie 12 and I'll know what you mean. I also had this poodle pin from the 50s with clave little rhinestones in it for 12 as well. Put in Poodle 12 if you would like to claim this pin. And then doo -doo -doo -doo, I had this trivet left. This was the only one left made in Japan. Um, it's got mushrooms and onions and carrots and so on. And it will hang on the wall. It's got little feet so you can lay it down or hang it. This also was 12. Just write Mushroom 12 and I'll know what you mean. And then I had our books. I had the 1949 Counting Rhymes with the excellent little illustrations inside. And this would be 14 on the vintage book. Just put Counting 14 and I'll know what you meant. It's a linen book from 49. I had 1978 pictorial souvenir of It's a Small World. This also is 14. Put in Small World 14 if you want to claim that. Cool. And then I had all of my penny doll couples. None of these got claimed. Um, these are my little Dutch couple for 15 made in Japan penny dolls. So you can put Dutch couple 15. I have the little uh, Chinese couple 
four, 15. Okay. I have this other little couple. They might be English or Irish. I don't know. And they are also 15. Okay. Hi, Susan. So penny doll couples are 15 each for each couple. Um, if you're watching this on the replay and you see none of these got claimed, you certainly can email us and we will get you fixed up. Um, and then I had these little Royal Adderley. These are bone china made in England flowers. I had two of the pink Vinca or what is otherwise known as Periwinkle. I had two of these left at $9 a piece. You just say bone china pink flower, nine. And they are little place card holders. So $9 a piece on the Vinca or Periwinkle little place card holders. Cool. Oh, golly. And then I had... Hey, Heidi. See here. I think that was everything. I hope that was everything. <laughs> See here. Yes, that was everything. All right. So if you're watching on the replay, I don't think anything of mine got claimed. So definitely um, let us know if you want to claim something. We'll get you invoiced. Remember, guys, we are going to combine everything from the week. So anything you purchase Wednesday night, anything that you purchase Thursday night with the live shop with me, and anything you purchase tonight will be combined into one invoice that will be sent out tomorrow, Monday. Okay? Remember, Wednesday night, we are having another live shop with me at Super Junk, my friend Greta's place. If you missed this last Thursday night, do not miss this Wednesday. Holy beans, it's fast and furious and so much fun. So we are going shopping at Greta's again on Wednesday night. That'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. Okay. So thank you guys again for a wonderful night. Thank you, Lisa, for being an awesome bid ender and yeah, putting time for us. Yes. Wednesday night is going to rock so much fun. We are always here on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and always on the tube Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then we'll be doing pop-ups along the way on Thursdays as well. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for all the love. Mod Squad, I appreciate all your help. Thank you, girls. Thank I appreciate you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And to Tonight was so fun. Totally different stuff, too. I think yeah. that's what's fun about some of the estate sales we've hit lately is the stuff is just different. different. So if you need a horse bit for 16 bucks, you hit us up. We I'm have telling to you. Or some penny dolls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a great night. Peace, love, and vintage. Thank you so yeah. much for love. And we'll catch you in our Facebook group. If you haven't joined, join. The link is in the description of this video. Make sure to subscribe before you go and throw a thumbs up on this stream. Yes, yes. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Peace, love, and vintage. Right on. Bye. Thank you.